secretly, secretly, but unable to hide it. Chapter 31 to Chapter 40. Have fun reading as well as listening. Chapter 31. Sangji suddenly recalls that summer holiday of the second year in her junior high school. She was taking an escalator down from the third floor. Fu Zhangchu confessed his feeling toward her then Duan Jia, Su, just appeared behind them. Saying those words, Lao Dong Shi, old thing, at first it made her feeling well. But because he listens to it, it makes her feel guilty by hundreds and thousands time. She immediately denies, I am not cursing you. Duan Jia, Su, M. Sang Ji is just turns relieved as she thinks that he listens to her. Duan Jia Su asks again, then who are you cursing? Sang Ji starts to feel numb. Because she is drunk and couldn't think clearly, she stammers. You doesn't know him. Duan Jia Su just says, ah. Sang Ji nods quickly. Then Good Go wants to know him. What kind of person can let Xiao Sang Ji cursing? Duan Jia Su laughs. Xiao Sang Ji, how about you tell Good Go? She already asks that he doesn't know that person, but he still asks. Now who should she talk about? Who? She said that he doesn't know that person. It seems to be too late to say that person is Sang Yen. If she says it is another person, she feels unsafe. Sang she changes the subject purposely. How could you be so gossipy now? M. Duan Jia Su takes two steps down to stand by her side. Then he stands there. Maybe because Lao Dong she is terribly idle. Let's go, Nian Qing, Yang. Xiao Ping Yu, little friend? Duan Jia Su's tone stresses on the words Nian Qing. He slowly says, Lao Dong, she sends you back to the university. He said it and goes downstairs. Sangji's palm unconsciously sweats a lot. She just follows behind him anxiously. She hesitates, then explains. These words, I feel it's quite civil. It's just, I feel. Sangji holds her bag tightly. I think it is not dirty words. The time they go out, it's the parking area. Duan Jia Su takes out his car key and presses it. He seems to not listen to her words. He just says, get on. Sang Ji doesn't move. Jia Su Go, where is your house? Win Ting Yuan, Win Ting Park. Sang Ji just comes over the city for a month. She doesn't clearly know where is that place. Oh! Duan Jia Su explains for a while. Near the city library. It's in the opposite direction with my university. Sangji points to the metro station nearby. It's late. Let me take the metro and go back. Let's not trouble you. Nian Qing to Xiao Peng Yu, young little friend. Duan Jia Su plays with his car key. He smiles. Gu Gu wants to settle the account with you, then in passing send you home. I'm not specially sending you home. He purposely paused for a while, looks at her and says indolently, do you understand? Sangji is in the wrong. She doesn't anything else. She just be silent and anxious. She goes to the front passenger seat door. She opens it with her energy, but outside her expectation, the door is still locked. She looks back at Duan Jia Su. She watches him come over and stands beside her. They are not so close with each other, yet it gives her oppressed feeling. Duan Jia Su stops for two seconds and presses his car key again and opens the door for her. Sangji just gets inside the car. Very quickly, Duan Jia Su gets on the driver's seat and looks at her. Buckle up. Sangji, oh, and follows him. He immediately drives his car and knocks his fingers on his steering wheel. Then he suddenly stops and starts to question her. How many bottles did you drink? Sangji thinks about it. Add up all it should be two bottles. Duan Jia Su, you should take care of yourself outside. Don't drink with strangers. I know most of them. My roommates are there too. M. Um, Gu just reminds you a bit. I know. Sangji thinks that he would talk more. But after that, he just drives and doesn't say anything else. He even doesn't mention about his so what, settle the debt. Instead, it makes Sangji feel very scared and on edge. She doesn't take initiative to talk to him as she is afraid to influence him. She just takes out her phone and plays it. Just in time, there's a notification from her WeChat. She opens it up and notices a new friend invitation, Jiang Ming. This name makes Sang Ji remembers Ai Wei's words. 
She doesn't know where does he get her WeChat ID. Saying she usually doesn't like to add friends that she doesn't know. She uses to pretend like she doesn't see it and just logs out. But now she just accepts his request. Just let it be. Duan Jia Su starts to speak up. Xiao Hai, let's communicate for a while. Sang Ji immediately lifts up her head. Ah. Duan Jia Su, why are you cursing Gu Gu? Sang Ji peeks at him silently. She doesn't know how to explain to him. At last, she just says honestly, I don't like to be regarded as Xiao Hai. Just because of that. M. Her M sounds serious. Duan Jia Su feels it's funny and indescribable. Why do you not like it? It's like when you are married in the future, your Pama will still think of you as their kids. It's like that. Sang Ji's mood is bad. This person seems to want to be her good. Now he wants to be her Pa. She doesn't want to argue anymore with him, so she looks at the window. On the way, they pass a convenience store. Duan Jia Su gets off the car and goes to buy things. Very quickly, he returns with a plastic bag. Sang Ji doesn't ask what he is buying. Without knowing, the car has arrived in front of University Gate. The car couldn't enter the university, so Duan Jia Su finds a place to stop the car. Let me send you inside. Sang Ji nods and unfastens her seatbelt. Her dormitory isn't too far from the front gate of the university. It's around 10 minutes. Sangji wants to say more things, but she doesn't know how should she speak. After half day, she says, Jia Su Ge, tomorrow do you need to go to work? Duan Jia Su laughs lightly. Tomorrow will be Saturday. Ayo. They chat for a while. Basically, Sangji racks her brain to throws out questions to make the atmosphere not be too awkward. After all, he has good intention to send her. The time they arrive in front of the dorm, Sang Ji just turns relieved. She waves her hand. Jia Su Ge, it's late. Drive safely. Take care. Before she reaches the door, Duan Jia Su suddenly calls after air. Sang Ji. Sang Ji looks back. The next second, he lifts up the plastic on his grip. Go back and boil water and honey. So you will not have headache tomorrow. Sangji pauses and takes it. Thank you. You also are alone and far away from your home. If you need any help, you could find me. Duan Jia Su strokes her head and smiles. Guh Guh is joking with you. I know when someone in your age has something that you want to do. So I don't really think Xiao Sangji has no conscience. As for the words, Lao Dong Shi. Duan Jia Su couldn't help but to laugh. He says, how could you say that isn't bad word? Xiao Gu Niang should say more civilized words. Sang Ji doesn't dare to look at him. In the future, I'll not say anything else. Duan Jia Su, it's good that you know you are wrong. You could go now. He considers about something for a while and adds, if you have time, you could come and find Gu Gu to have a meal. Sang Ji nods, okay. Gu Gu is alone right here, so the time Yurga said that you are coming here to attend the university here. Duan Jia Su looks at her gently. Gu Gu feels very happy. Sangji returns to her dorm. Her dorm room is still empty. The light is off. Sangji turns on the light and goes to the balcony. She stands there for a while and looks at the night scenery. It's dark and she couldn't see Duan Jia Su's figure. She returns to her own chair and puts down the plastic on the table. Sangji opens up the jar of honey. She uses her spoon and takes a bit of honey. She puts it on the glass and she pours a warm water inside. She feels her stomach is unwell. She drinks it to calm her stomach down. She thinks of what Duan Jia Su's last sentence. Sang Ji turns straight. She feels something is blocking her heart. It's a strange thing. Why she feels in a bad mood? He said that he is alone. Isn't he coming from here? Why is he saying that he is alone right here? It shouldn't be like what she thinks, right? If he is really alone right here, then she is here, not contacting him, and she even isn't answering his call. That makes her actions aren't good. This man never does anything wrong toward her. He always treats her well. Her actions should make her a thankless wretch, right? But Sang Ji clearly understands. If she acts like she used to do, being together with him, chatting frequently with him, accepting his good action toward HR. She definitely will. She will change to her previous self that likes him. 
After the shower, Sangji calls her parents like she usually does. Then she lays down for a short while. She feels so tired, but she couldn't fall asleep. Because she drinks beer, she couldn't sleep very well. In the early morning 2 a.m., Sangji hears a noise from her roommates. They are coming home, but because they are afraid to disturb her, they only turn on the small lamp. They also move lightly to avoid making any noises. After being awake, Sang Ji couldn't sleep again. She lifts up her head and says lowly, you guys could turn on the light. It's okay. Hearing her voice, Ning Wei immediately looks at her and says guiltily, I'm sorry, do we disturb you? No. Sang Ji says, I just slept for a while and now I couldn't sleep again. Then don't sleep now. Wang Rualan suddenly be so excited. Sang Ji, let me tell you new gossip. Sang Ji, ah. Uh? Wang Rualan, Ning Wei finds herself a partner. Ning Wei's face is blushing red and says annoyedly, lower your voice. Sang Ji's response is too late. Who is it? He is from our department. He kept on sitting beside her. Ning Wei's mood is good. She sounds embarrassed. I don't expect that he suddenly. Wang Rualan, Sang Ji, you should stay a few minutes longer before. A good mood could influence people easily. Sang Ji smiles. The one that you said that you are interested with, is it him? Ning Wei nods. Yes, ah. Uh. Another roommate, you XN, this time is coming out of the shower. She says curiously, what are you guys talking about? Wang Rualan, we are talking about Ning Wei. I Ning Wei, you are too rushing it. You XN says. You just find yourself a boyfriend. I haven't even seen anyone that I interested in. He said that he falls in love with me at the first sight. Ning Wei takes all her toiletries and laughs happily. She gets into the bathroom. I'll not talk anymore. I want to take a shower. The time she is inside, Wang Rualan says again, Oh right, Sang Ji. Before I heard Jiang Ming asked our class monitor for your WeChat ID, have you accepted his request? Basically, the ones that came to the party are the ones that close to Ning Wei. Except the roommates, most of them are men. Sang Ji, M. Wang Ruolan, are you interested too with him? Sang Ji mumbles, my hand accepts it. Mentioning this, Sang Ji remembers to look at her phone. She takes out her phone and opens up her WeChat. She notices that Jiang Ming is sending few messages to her. There's also a message from Duan Jia Su. Sang Ji doesn't give him any remark, his ID just is Duan. She pauses and opens up Duan Jia Su's chat. His message. In the future, if you come home this late to the school, find someone to accompany you together to go back. Sang Ji looks at it for a few seconds and types, I get it. She notices the time and plans to just send it tomorrow. Wang Ruolan is still talking. He seems to notice that you're gone. He just wanted to ask your location and sent you home. He is a good person. M. Sang Ji opens up the chat with Jiang Ming and replies politely several sentences. You XIN, Sang Ji, are you also finding yourself a boyfriend? No. Sang Ji feels that her mood isn't improving. She suddenly sits up. Her movement is too sudden that it surprised both you XIN and Wang Ruolan. You XIN, what is it? Sang Ji looks at both of them, then she says slowly, Let me ask you guys a question. Wang Ruolan, what? Sang Ji says seriously, it's my friend. You XIN, okay, I know it's not you. Sang Ji pretends not to listen. My friend, previously she liked her good Ji's friend. Then her good Ji's friend just thinks of her as his Mei Mei. Then she notices that he seems to have a girlfriend, then she gives up. At last she meets him again. What do you think she should do? Wang Ruolan is curious. How old he is? Sang Ji, undergraduate, he has graduated three years ago. Then, you XN counts, he should be around 25 or 6 years old. Wang Ruolan, then it's okay. Now does he have any girlfriend? I don't know. Sang Ji shakes her head. He shouldn't have. If not, he will not say that he is alone. You XIN, you, oh, okay, then your friend still likes him? I don't know. Sangji says depressingly, not like, but that person just thinks my friend as his Mei Mei. You XIN, then you should see whether your friend like him or not. If she likes it, then she should pursue him. 
If she doesn't like him, then just be a friend and contact each other often. Sangji says nothing. Wang roll on. If not, why should your friend be so confused? She feels unhappy. Sangji says, every time she thinks that he is dating another woman, she feels very unhappy. You Xian, how old is your friend when she starts to like him? Sangji, since she was in grade 8. You Xian is startled. Then she counts the age. It's very common. But if he likes you since that time, that man should be a pervert. Wang Ruolan. Moreover, that man should be around 25 or years old, right? If he never dates, then there's a chance that he has no sexual experience. A 25 years old man without any sexual experience will be a pervert. Sang Ji is stupefied. Ah. You Xian, it might not be a pervert, but maybe he has a problem? Sang Ji is startled for few seconds and blushes. Her sullen feeling is going away. What nonsense are you talking about? Wang Ruolan, Sang Ji, describe this man a bit. He is very handsome. His achievement is very great then. Sang Ji scratches her head. He is. Yu Xian feels impatient. What? Sang Ji doesn't know how to describe Duan Jia Su's nature precisely. She thinks for a while. He is quite flirty. He acts a bit like a playboy. You could say that he is handsome and flirty. How could that kind of man have no girlfriend? Wang Ruolan says, Oh right, how do you know that man? Sangji says lowly, He is my good Ji's friend. He frequently comes to my house. It's a silence. Sangji, I feel that you don't need to mind it. Yu Exine considers for a while. Then she says seriously, You shouldn't mind about his previous relationship before he knows you. But if in these years he never dates, then there's only a possibility. Sangji looks at her nervously. What? He possibly likes your guh. Chapter 32 Sangji starts to regret her doing to mention these things. She feels maybe this because she drank beers. She is losing her mind or perhaps she isn't fully awake. What nonsense you are talking about. She waves her hand and shows that she doesn't want to talk about it again. Forget it, stop it. I want to sleep again. Don't you think that I'm being reasonable? You Xian laughs. Oh, right. Does your go have a girlfriend? Sang Ji opens her eyes and says irresolutely, he shouldn't have one. He hasn't told my parents, so I also don't know about it. Wang Ruolan, then has your go be in a relationship? Looking at Sang Ji's reaction, you Xian's eyes go big. She feels that her guess and also the evidence are matching with each other. Wow, he has no girlfriend? I don't know, he never mentions it to me. Sangji thinks about it, but during his senior high school, my parents were called by his Laosher about dating in young age. I also don't remember it well. Yu Exian is very excited about it. If it's in senior high school, it should be a long time ago. Two men around their 20s have no experience of dating. Every day they mingle together. Tell me, is there any reason of their action? I also never know for sure whether they had relationships or not. Sangji looks at her. It's hard to explain it in a few words. She says, don't guess it again. It's better for you to read less novel. Wang Ruolan, what does your good Ji's friend do for a living? He seems to be working at gaming company. Sangji thinks about it. Programmer? He is writing code. I heard from my good that he seems to be an online game department. Programmer. Wang Ruolan turns silent for several seconds. He is handsome? Yes, Sangji says. It's possible that I never sees anyone else in the society. But with my current age, I never see anyone more handsome than him. Wang Ruolan, isn't this job requires days staying up late at night with computer? Sang Ji, he should mind his outer appearance. Maybe he goes to the beauty parlor. Yu Xin says, he sounds a bit gay. Wang Ruolan, you also said that his words are quite flirty. To whom he usually does it? Sangji thinks of the time he chatted with Sang Yen and friends, most of them to those around his age, perhaps those who are younger. Basically, he says in that kind of style. Wang Ruolan chokes. I don't feel that it's appropriate. Being with that kind of man, the chance of he has an affair is quite great. Sangji frowns. He will not. Wang Ruolan, I'm just making a guess. After all, I never meet him. He is not that kind of person. Sangji says. He treats everyone well. Moreover, it's clear that he is just joking and teasing you. 
This time Ningwei comes out of the bathroom. She notices the atmosphere is slightly subtle. She dries her hair and asks, What are you guys talking about? Wang Rualan gives a quick overview for her. Ningwei suddenly realizes what has happened. I, Zhang Zhang, you are beautiful. Why should you keep on hanging yourself on him? Maybe when you are giving him up, you will notice that there are lots of people better than him. Zhangji turns silence for a few seconds. Maybe? If you feel that you couldn't give him up, then you should try. Anyway, he isn't married. He just sees you as his Mei Mei. You guys are also not related by blood. Ningwei says, As for whether he has ever dated or not, you shouldn't think too much about it. No need to mind it. Sang Ji, you are telling me to pursue him? Ningwei, yes, ah. Uh. Impossible. Sang Ji couldn't imagine if that really happens, how do An Jia Su will respond? She also has no courage to fall twice at the same place. Forget it, I will just live my comfortable life. You XN, actually you also don't need to chase after him, you just need to show signs? Sang Ji, what? You said that he always teases you right, he is quite flirty right. You XN gives her a plan, then how about you use the same tone to him? It sounds reasonable. Sang Ji nods and imagines it. She smiles and looks at Duan Jia Su. Then she says, Guga, what happened? How could you just flush the time you meet Gigi? It's too scary. It's just her imagination. It hasn't been into practice. Sang Ji feels she is out of breath. Yu Xian feels that is a good plan. What do you think? Stop it. Sang Ji covers her face with the blanket and says, Let's not mention it again. You guys should think that I am drunk and act crazy. I write a bad ending novel for you. She wants to directly forget about their this time encounter. She wants to pretend that nothing has happened. After all, this is a big city. The chance of them meeting each other again will be low. She has no thought of treating him that like she is doing now. She shouldn't be estranged toward him. Because of Duan Jia Su's sentence of Guga is alone right here, Sang Ji falls asleep again and has a dream. In her dream, she is that third person. She is dreaming of his life. In his life. Every day he works and gets off work. Every day he eats alone, goes home alone. At home, he is alone. He is doing everything alone. Then Sangji dreams when she was in grade eight, she went home with her classmates. Because it's still early, they went to a small snack store to buy a fried chicken breast. She notices Duan Jia Su was working part-time there. His life only surrounded study and earned money. He seemed to have no life. But she never him complaining about it. Even for once. That time like what he did in the dessert store, he doesn't take her money. He even added more to her portion till it is full. Duan Jia Su sealed it off and gave her non-transparent plastic so no one noticed it. Several other female students took their own portions. Duan Jia Su gave it to her. Xiao Hai, take it. Sang Ji takes it. Xia Xia, thank you, Guga. Guga sees that you are very cute. He is wearing apron. He is smiling brightly. Then he bends his body and says to her, So I secretly give you more. The next day, Sang Ji wakes up early. Perhaps because she doesn't feel at ease, or perhaps because her mood. She flips around her bed for a while. Then she takes her phone. She replies to Duan Jia Su, I know. She thinks that he might still be sleeping. After all last night, he came home late. Now it's just 6 a.m. She holds her blanket and hesitates whether she should ask him for a meal. Duan Jia Su unexpectedly gives her a quick reply. You're awake at this early time? Sang Ji is surprised to see his reply. The sky is still dark. The room is still dark. The only thing lights up is only her phone. It is so quiet. Sang Ji feels a bit in rush. She doesn't know what should she reply to him. She also doesn't feel good to let him wait. She immediately just chews a nod emoticon and replies him. Duan Jia Su, are you feel unwell after drink too much alcohol? Sang Ji, no. Duan Jia Su, if you want to go out and hang out, if you cannot drink beer, then don't drink it. Sang Ji pursues her lips and types. Okay. Then there's no other reply. Sangji looks at her phone and be hesitant. She is considering her wording. Jia Su Go, when will you be free? 
If I don't disturb you, I want to treat you a meal to thank you for sending me home yesterday. If you have no free time, then it's okay. Just wait till you have time. If you couldn't think when will you have time, then how about next month during the Thanksgiving day? I also want to use that day to express my thankfulness to you. After she types it all, Sang Ji reads all her text. Then she changes all the Anna you to Nin you, but use for an older person to be more courteous. Usually she doesn't really pay attention to it, but using Ni makes her feel a bit disrespecting him. Sang Ji continues to check her wording. She spends half a minute to do it. After a third check, she sends it. Then Duan Jia Su replies, Thanksgiving Day. Sang Ji, M. Sang Ji, if not, you could decide the time. This time Duan Jia Su sends her a voice note. Sang Ji's earphone isn't on her bed, so she lifts up her blanket and gets off the bed. She goes to the balcony to hear it. He seems to find her words funny. Thanksgiving Day, then just Thanksgiving Day. But it's still next month. Gugu doesn't know whether I'll be free that time. Sang Ji asks hesitantly, Do you, Nin, have anything else to do? Duan Jia Su, um, there's possibility that I'll be working overtime. Without waiting her reply, Duan Jia Su sends another voice note. Just this way, it's still early. You can go and sleep again. That time Gugu will take you also to repair your phone. Sang Ji is a bit stupefied. My phone is working well. Duan Jia Su, um, it isn't broken? Sang Ji, yes, ah. Uh. Duan Jia Su, Gugu thought your phone cannot type the word, and I, you. Sang Ji. Duan Jia Su, where is this word, and I, coming from, in the past? How could I never see you respect Gugu that much? Now you keep on saying Nin, you, and Nin? Sang Ji looks at it and feels that she indeed is a bit stupid. The next seconds, he sends another voice note again. Does it mean that you are taking Gugu into your here? He sounds lazy. He clearly is teasing her. Sang Ji uses to his tease. But she always feels annoyed by it. She straightens her face and sends a voice note. Recently, my pa said to me, then I should use more honorific expression in addressing those who are 25 years old and older. Jia Sugu, hi. Your Ninda voice sounds very young. Sang Ji says, I hope that your appearance will also be young as your sound. That accidental encounter has let their relationship starts to be at ease. Sang Ji doesn't reject his call. During the free time, they both chat through WeChat. Basically, it's his initiative to tell her about something. He acts like her gugu. She also tries hard to make herself feel like his mei mei. She just thinks that her feeling is inexistent. The Thanksgiving day falls on Thursday. A day before. Duan Jia Su says to her that he doesn't know whether he needs to work overtime or not for the next day. He asks her to wait at the school and he will call her when it's time. Sang Ji doesn't have a class that day so in the afternoon, she just draws in her computer. When it's almost 6 p.m., she stands up and changes her clothes into a dress and wears a light makeup. She even sticks a fake eyelashes, which she rarely does. She also uses a blush on. Very quickly, she notices that it's a bit weird, so she removes it all. Sang Ji looks at the mirror. She is having internal struggle. I, just like this. Based on his temper, he might says, Xiao Sang Ji comes and meets Gu Gu, and you are wearing makeup. You especially dress up for meeting me? Dream, on. She rather be not very pretty than letting him have a chance to be narcissistic. Sang Ji returns to her seat in front of computer. The time passes by and now it's 8 p.m. Sang Ji feels a bit hungry. She sends him a message to ask whether he is free or not. He doesn't reply. Sang Ji hesitates and gives him a call. It's not answered. Sang Ji thinks that he should be busy working overtime that he doesn't see her message. But she thinks if he really does work overtime, he definitely will tell her. She doesn't hesitate anymore and calls him again. She calls for seven to eight times, then it's answered. Sang Ji releases her breath. Jia Su Gu, are you working overtime? I'm sorry, Sang Ji. Gu Gu just sees your call. Unexpectedly, his voice sounds hoarse. He is speaking slowly, it's hard. Let's not go out today, okay? You go and have a meal by yourself. Don't starve yourself. 
Hearing he sounds strange, Sangji says, Guga, are you sick? Duan Jia Su, it's okay. He sounds like he says yes tacitly. Moreover, hearing from his tone, he seems to be in pain. Sangji immediately takes her bag and asks, Are you sick anywhere? He stops and thinks about it. It seems to be stomachache? Maybe I ate something bad yesterday. It's okay. Gugu will take the medicine. Sangji frowns. You aren't going to the hospital? Duan Jia Su laughs lightly. No. Thank you, Xiao Sangji, to care about Gugu. She walks faster to go out FO the dorm building. Sangji sees the new school bus. She gets on and asks him, Jia Su Gu, where is your office? You want to come here? M. Duan Jia Su doesn't say anything else and just tells her his office address. Sangji notes it and asks seriously, Gugu, are you feeling unwell? He says lightly, it's not bad. Sangji thinks about it and says, then find a place to sit down first. I'll go over right now to take you to the hospital. If you are really unwell, then let's call the ambulance, okay? Duan Jia Su laughs. It's not that serious. If you are unwell, then you must go to the hospital. Sang Ji feels a bit angry. Her tone is a bit harsh and loud. Could you be better if you just endure it? If not, take a look if you have colleagues to take you there. Let them send you to the hospital. Why are you angry? Duan Jia Su seems to find this funny. Xiao Sang Ji, don't be angry. Gugu will be good, okay? Gugu will just stay here. Duan Jia Su says to wait for you to pick Gugu up. Duan Jia Su's office is located at Gangbei Building. It's a large office building. Sangji takes the metro nonstop to go there. She uses the map on her phone to find it. She enters the building and notices a lot of employees are getting in and out. She wants to ask Duan Jia Su for the floor, but she notices that he is sitting in the hall. In front of the reception desk, there are several sofas. He is sitting there. His face is pale. His usual red lips are colorless. He is leaning on the sofa with his eyes closed. His hand is covering his lower right abdomen. She doesn't know whether he is really in pain. Duan Jia Su shows no expression. Sang Ji approaches him and calls him. Jia Su Go. Hearing this, Duan Jia Su opens his eyes. He smiles when he notices her. He extends his hands and says, pull Gugu up. It's better to go to hospital. Sang Ji holds his hands and pulls him with her energy. Jia Su Gu, are you having fever? He stands up and says slowly, a little bit. Sang Ji holds his arm. Is there any hospital near here? Duan Jia Su thins about it. There's a community hospital. Sang Ji, then let's take a taxi there. Duan Jia Su, okay. She is afraid that he is in pain, so she doesn't dare to walk too fast. She walks two steps and shits a while. After several meters, Duan Jia Su looks at her and asks, Xiao Sang Ji, are you lending arm to support an elderly? Sang Ji looks at him. I don't think that you're a Xiao Hai. He notices her gaze and remembers her past words. Gugu couldn't change it, so I just call you that way for now, okay? He doesn't think her as Xiao Hai. Who is he lying to? Sang Ji doesn't want to argue with him. Then you could call me that way. They go out of the building. Except the metro, there's also a bus station nearby. But there are lots of people. She doesn't dare to move closer there. She is afraid that he would be squeezed out. She looks around and says to Duan Jia Su. Jia Su Gu, wait here. I will go front to stop a taxi. The time I get it, I'll call you okay. How could she treat him like a princess? Duan Jia Su follows her and doesn't really care. I just follow you there. This area is a crowded one. Most of people are taking metro or bus. Sangji plans to take him to the roadside, but this time, a bus arrives at the stop. A lot of people runs over quickly to get on. One of them is too rush and accidentally pushes Sangji. Sangji is unprepared. Her body is leaning forward. She wants to find something to steady herself, but in a flash, her palm touches Duan Jia Su's belly. The next moment, Sangji could listen to his breath. She immediately retreats her hand. She feels that she should touch a part where he feels really in pain. She raises her head and feels so worried. She wants to ask about his condition. But the time she hasn't said anything, she feels something warm on her forehead. 
It's soft and warm. If Sang Ji isn't wrong, it seems to be his lips. It touches her forehead. From her view, she could see Duan Jia Su's sliding Adam apple. She could smell his scent. Chapter 33 It only lasts for a short period. It might not last for a second. Sang Ji is at loss. She even doesn't do anything to respond. She feels that Duan Jia Su is stiffen and then immediately stands up straight. He takes a step back. They both make a space in between. They're standing in the back of the bus station. Sang Ji lifts up her face and looks at his face. Sang Ji doesn't dare to look at his eyes, so she takes a step back. She doesn't know where to put her hands and legs. She doesn't know how should she respond to make it be appropriate. If she responds too great, it will look weird. If she responds like it's nothing, wouldn't it be inappropriate? If not, she just pretends like nothing has happened? Sang Ji couldn't say anything. Her mind is in a mess. She wants to use her sleeve and rubs it against her forehead. But the time she raises her arm, she feels that isn't it too obvious. So she just strokes her head. Very quickly, Sang Ji hears Duan Jia Su speaks up. H.I.'s breath is rushed and rapid like he is enduring the pain. I'm sorry. Sang Ji looks at him. She notices that his face is getting even paler. Maybe because it's the weather, he sweats a lot. His forehead is all wet. He looks like he will faint soon. Sang Ji is startled. She suddenly remembers that she touches something on abdomen. She stammers, Guga, you are in very great pain. Is it because I knocked against? What do you mean you knocked against me? Duan Jia Su tries to calm his breathing. You just touch it a bit. Do you want to have a chance to scam me? I'm sorry. Sang Ji feels like she wants to cry. Her eyes are red. Guga, wait for me a while. I will call a taxi. This time Duan Jia Su says nothing, go. She goes to the roadside and luckily she notices an unoccupied taxi. She signals for the taxi driver to stop. Then she says to the taxi driver to wait for a while. She immediately runs toward Duan Jia Su's side. She holds him to walk toward the taxi. Duan Jia Su is walking very slowly. He seems to be in pain when he moves. He suddenly laughs. This time you really look like you are holding an old man. Sang Ji couldn't laugh. Xiao Sang Ji, Guga feels like I don't have stomachache. Duan Jia Su looks at Sang Ji. He seems to ponder on something. He says, but Guga still. Feel a bit of pain. After getting on the taxi, the driver looks back at them. He notices that Duan Jia Su's face. Is he drunk? How is he? He will not throw up on the taxi ride. On the taxi, he feels the pain is decreasing. Duan Jia Su's face isn't that pale anymore. He smiles and says, Driver, don't worry. I will endure it. The driver frowns and reminds him, If you throw up, you should pay $200. If he throw up, we will pay you. Sang Ji says quickly, Shu Shu, uncle, he is unwell, he is not drunk. Please drive us to the city hospital. Thank you. The driver says nothing else and just drives the CAR. Sang Ji looks at Duan Jia Su. He is leaning on his seat. His sitting position looks lazy. His one hand is still covering the bottom right of his abdomen. Sang Ji doesn't want to let him waste his energy by talking so she doesn't say anything. But Duan Jia Su speaks up first. Sang Ji, fasten your seatbelt. She just, oh. Then she wants to fasten hers, but she notices that Duan Jia Su also hasn't fastened his own seatbelt. She approaches his side. Duan Jia Su notices her movement. What? Sang Ji extends her arm to find the seatbelt for him. I help you to fasten yours. Duan Jia Su smiles. Why are you helping me to fasten seatbelt? Gugu asks you to fasten yours. I help you sit well. Sang Ji shakes her head and says resolutely, Gugu, you could sleep for a while. After sleeping, you will not feel that painful. I will wake you up when we arrive there. Okay, then sorry to trouble Xiao Sang Ji. Duan Jia Su doesn't refuse and just sits down to come over and take care of Gugu. Fortunately, the city hospital isn't that far. The driver stops the car in front of the hospital. Sang Ji pays it up and holds Duan Jia Su to get off the taxi. Then she takes him to the emergency department. The doctor checks on Duan Jia Su and from the checkup, he is sure that Duan Jia Su is having an acute appendicitis. Sang Ji stays on the side and listens to it. 
more or less in his current condition if it's too late, his tomic will perforate. That time it will be a huge problem. She pursues her lips and looks at Duan Jia Su. Duan Jia Su seems to not care about this, he is still smiling at her. Then the doctor writes something on his medical record and asks Sang Ji to pay first so the doctor could arrange the operation time. Sang Ji nods and looks at the invoices. Duan Jia Su calls after her. Sang Ji. Sang Ji turns her head. What is it? Here, inside here, there's a card. The password is Good GE's birthday. Duan Jia Su takes out his wallet from his pocket. Thank you for Xiao Sang Ji's help. She watches him for several seconds and takes it. Okay. This is just a minor operation. It only has a small danger. It only takes a short time. After she pays it, Duan Jia Su looks at the time. He says, Xiao Sang Ji, it's 9 p.m. now. You should go home now. It will not be safe if you are too late. Sang Ji doesn't move. This is nothing big. Duan Jia Su says, For this illness, it only needs a minor operation and rests for a few days. I'll be okay. If you have free time, you could come to visit Gugu. It'll be okay. Sang Ji passes the invoice to the doctor and says, I'll wait till you are done, then I'll go back. It will take around an hour. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows. Wouldn't you be bored to wait? Sang Ji's mood is very bad. She says depressingly, Don't talk anymore. Okay. Duan Jia Su smiles. Gugu will not say anything more. Sang Ji says nothing else. She just stands silently beside him. She suddenly thinks that if today she didn't have appointment with her, supposedly based on what he said on the phone, he wouldn't come to the hospital. She feels choked up with anxiety. Duan Jia Su gets into the operation room. Sang Ji sits outside and waits for him. She is afraid that her roommates might worry about her, so she sends a message to the roommates group chat. Tonight, I probably will come home late. Then she starts to browse about points for attention after having appendicitis operation. After a while, Sang Ji puts back her phone. Then suddenly she thinks about what happened. She strokes her forehead. Perhaps because of the psychological effect this time, that part feels hot again. Forget it. Don't think any more about it. Don't. Think. About. It again. She was the one that knocked against him first, but he is the one that said sorry. To analyze it carefully, it's her that takes advantage of him. It's nothing major. She is not a kid anymore. Looking from his response, he shouldn't think too much of it. Her phone suddenly vibrates. The screen shows the caller ID, Mama. She answers it quickly, Mama. Li Ping says, GG, are you at the dorm? Because she studies in Ihi University, which is far away from him, Li Ping has mentioned to her that every night she should call her. If there is anything, she should send her a message. Sang Ji doesn't lie. No. Li Ping, are you going out with your friends? No. Sang Ji says, Mama, I meet Good Ji's friend, the one that used to be my private tutor, Duan Jia Su. Li Ping, I, Mama remembers him. Because he has helped me a lot, I want to treat him a meal. Sang Ji explains, but he is unwell and I send him to the hospital. Now I'm at the hospital. Li Ping, sick? Is it serious? Sang Ji, the doctor said that he has acute appendicitis. He should be okay soon. Then pay much more attention to him, take care of him. He should have no one to take care of him. Li Ping sighs, you should take care of him and go back early, okay? Sang Ji is interested. She says, what do you mean that he has no one to take care of him? Mama, how do you know about it? Ah, uh, Li Ping says, I seem to never mention to you about that matter, but don't mention it in front of him. You're good GE's friend. I think in first year of college's winter vacation, he wants to borrow 30,000 with your Gugu. That time your Gugu was young, how could he have that kind of money? So he went to ask your pa. Li Ping says lightly, he said that it's for his mama to treat an illness. Then he returns it all. Now it seems he is alone. Sang Ji couldn't say anything for a moment. She finally says, then his papa? Mama doesn't know about it. Li Ping says, but if his papa is alive, how could he ask Xiao Hai, little kid, for lend that kind of money? After the operation, Duan Jia Su should stay a week at the hospital. Duan Jia Su is sent to a two-bed patient room. He is wearing the patient's uniform. 
His bang is drooping on his forehead. His face is still pale. The operation is done with local anesthetic, so he is awake. He is still on IV drip. He notices Sang Ji and smiles. He once again reminds her, Xiao Sang Ji, you should return to the dorm now. Sang Ji says, I know. Go out and take a taxi. Take a note of the license plate of the taxi and sends it to Gugu. Duan Jia Su says, Then after you arrive at the dorm, give Gugu a call. Oh! Sang Ji holds her back. She hesitates. Is the operation painful? No. Duan Jia Su laughs. There's an anesthetic. I couldn't feel it. Sang Ji nods. Then tomorrow I'll come again and visit you. Just come by when you have no class. Duan Jia Su says, Gugu will be okay here. No need Xiao Sang Ji to run over here every day. Sang Ji looks at her. Jia Su Gugu, goodbye. Um, goodbye. Duan Jia Su looks at his phone after Duan Jia Su sees Sang Ji goes out of the sick room. He notices that Sang Yen had called him. He calls him back. When waiting for the call to be answered, Duan Jia Su suddenly remembers what happened before with Sang Ji. He even recalls Sang Ji's response. That young girl was caught off guard. She seemed to be shocked. She even didn't dare to look at him. It's possibly she felt awkward so she was silent. Was she taking offense of this matter? Before the call is answered, Duan Jia Su just hangs up. Finally, he has time and energy to recall this matter. He counts that after a few months this young girl should be 20, then would it mean that his action also taking advantage of her? She is his brother's Mei Mei. She is Xiao Hai that grows up under his watch. Moreover, now she is 20 years old. He shouldn't tease her that much now. What if that Xiao Hai misunderstands him to have a brute thought? This is not good. Duan Jia Su strokes his forehead and suddenly feels guilty. He suddenly thinks of her previous internet boyfriend. This time, his phone rings again and cuts his thought. It's a call from Sang Yen. Duan Jia Su answers it and considers whether he should be honest about this matter to Sang Yen. Sang Yen says lazily, Bro, your appendix is cut off? How is it? It's quite okay. Duan Jia Su straightens his lips, you could try. What is the point of being handsome, understand? Sang Yen then says, I heard that your mei sent you to the hospital. Duan Jia Su, M. It's just a minor illness and you need to be sent to the hospital. Couldn't you go to the hospital by yourself? Sang Yen says, Could you prioritize your health better? If you're in pain, you should go to the hospital by yourself. Duan Jia Su, you are calling me to say this? I just have a free time and hear that you are sick. I call to celebrate it. Sang Yen says, Since you are okay, then I'll sleep again. Wait, Duan Jia Su is silent for a while. I want to say something to you. Say it. Duan Jia Su considers how to say it. How should he say it? Should he say that I accidentally kissed your Mei a while, the young girl seems to be offended. I hope you as his Gugu will not mind. Isn't it sound crazy? Forget it. Duan Jia Su says, it's nothing. Sang Yen turns quiet. Then he says quickly, I couldn't bear this part of you. Why are you acting like a girl? How couldn't you just speak straightly? Duan Jia Su, okay, bye. Wait, Sang Yen turns excited. Bro, I heard that you recently attended a blind date. Your boss seems to be quite enthusiastic. She helps you to introduce the few women. Do you like anyone? I think now you seem to have no girlfriend. Sang Yen says, okay, bro, let me teach you. You shouldn't talk the way you usually do. Duan Jia Su, how do I talk? Your tone, I keep on being embarrassed to attack you. Sang Yen says slowly, you should understand, you are too unrefined. I think you also don't like love between an older woman and a younger man. Sang Yen says, bro, let me tell you. Now those who are 90 and so on, don't like this kind of trick. Duan Jia Su, 90 and so? We as those who are born 90 and over are more energetic, understand? Sang Yen says lazily, I know that you are 80, so you don't understand. But you should follow the current trend. Duan Jia Su is a year older than Sang Yen. Duan Jia Su is 1989, while Sang Yen is 1990. Duan Jia Su remains silent and be happy. You are really idle, bye. Then he looks at the time. 
He calculates that from here to Ihi University. He wants to call Sangji to ask whether she already gets a taxi home. But suddenly from the corner of his eyes, he notices something near the door. He looks over. He immediately sees that the person who just left now is here. She stands near the door and doesn't move. She seems to be scared to be scolded by him. She says lowly, Jia Su Ge, if not let me stay here and accompany you. I think if I am the one that's sick. Sang Ji scratches her head. You will not leave too. Chapter 34 In the narrow two-bed sick room, the other bed is empty. This time there's only Duan Jia Su inside. The room is so silent and lonely. He is laying flat on the bed and says nothing. He shows no expression, so Sang Ji couldn't make out what he is thinking. Without his approval, Sang Ji also doesn't dare to get in. She just asks once more, Could I? Duan Jia Su speaks up and asks her, Have you eaten your dinner? I bought a bread nearby. Sang Ji blinks and moves toward his side. She holds her plastic to give him a look. I also buy a box of oolong tea. Could you be full by eating that? Duan Jia Su looks around. You should call takeaway to eat. Sangji shakes her head. I'm not too hungry. Duan Jia Su, you eat nothing. How could you not be hungry? I'm not hungry. She places the plastic bag on the desk and turns her body and moves the chair to next to his bed. She moves slowly. If I want to eat, I will eat. I'm an adult. I wouldn't starve myself. Duan Jia Su looks at her and suddenly smiles. He says nothing else. Sangji sits down on the chair and takes out the bread out. She says, I asked a nurse before. You should lay flat for six hours. Then after 12 hours, you could get off the bed. M. Sangji bites her bread and grumbles. Now you still cannot eat anything. For a week, you should eat liquid food. This four drip should be done for three days. Duan Jia Su just listens absentmindedly. M. Then the room turns quiet. It's only Sangji's voice of eating her bread. The sick room has heater. After sitting for some time, Sang Ji feels a bit hot. She stands up and takes off her coat. She hangs it on the chair. Duan Jia Su examines her and says lightly, It's winter. Why are you still wearing a coat? Suddenly, the silence is broken. Sang Ji raises her head slowly and meets his eyes. His tone sounds like the time her ma caught her not wearing spring trousers on springtime. Sang Ji doesn't want to be in control on what she could wear. This is a long skirt. Sangji lowers her head and continues to chew her bread. If you want to wear it, you also can wear it again. Duan Jia Su looks at her. Her way of eating things are still the same. She will stuff her mouth till her cheeks are bulging. She looks like a puffer fish. He wants to laugh, but he's afraid that he will tear open the wound. So he just says softly, here is colder than Nan Wu. You should pay more attention. It'll be hard if you fall ill. Sang Ji suddenly remembers the last time she came to Ihi. She feels it's hard to swallow. She doesn't see him and just drinks her oolong tea. She nods. She forces herself to finish the bread. Sang Ji looks at the time. Jia Su Ge, do you want to sleep now? What time is it? It's almost 11 o'clock. Duan Jia Su, how would you sleep here? Sang Ji thinks about it. I'll rent the chair for Kara. It's cheap. Chair for care? Wouldn't it be hard for you to sleep? Duan Jia Su frowns and clearly he isn't approving it. The next bed is empty. Just go and rent that one. No need. Sang Ji mumbles. I am not here to enjoying life. Without waiting for his reply, Sang Ji just stands up and goes out. Then Jia Su Ge, you should gather your sleepiness first. I will go out and ask. Chair for care costs around $10 a night. After she pays, she uses this time to go to nearby supermarket to buy toiletries. She returns to the sick room. Duan Jia Su is looking at his phone like he wants to send a message to someone. Sangji looks at him and says nothing. What takes you so long? Duan Jia Su puts down his phone. What did you buy? Toothpaste, toothbrush, and towels. Sangji takes all of it out. I want to and freshen up. Duan Jia Su, M, go. She walks two steps and suddenly thinks of something. She hesitates and turns her head. Jia Su Ge, do you want to wipe your face? You shouldn't brush your teeth. She has a lot of things. 
There's no one in the restroom. She places it all on the counter. She starts to get ready. Her mind starts to consider what should she do next. She doesn't know whether she should take initiative to ask as he also will not mention it. But it should be nothing. In the past when she had a sprain, he also helped her to treat her wound. He didn't think that it's too dirty. He also helped wipe her face. Now he is a sick person, he shouldn't be able to do it. She is here to take care of him too. Isn't she petty to mention to help him with that and just use his lot of time to consider about it? Sang Ji doesn't move slowly again. She takes out a towel from her plastic bag. She goes to the shower room and uses hot water to wash the towel for a while. Then she returns to the sick room. Sang Ji finds a place to put all the things and goes to Duan Jia Su's side. She notifies him. Jia Su Gu, let me wipe your face. No need. Duan Jia Su seems to not planning to let her help him. Take it here, I'll wipe it by myself. How could you wipe it by yourself? At first Sang Ji indeed was shy to do it, but this time being rejected by him makes her indescribable angry. She frowns and sits down on the bedside. Her tone sounds rash and cold. What will happen if you tear your cut? You will stay here for much longer. Duan Jia Su pauses and laughs. Why today you keep on being angry? Sang Ji doesn't look at his eyes. She folds the towel and wipes his face starting from the forehead. Am I angry? I always talk this way. She doesn't hesitate and keeps on wiping. The towel pass across his forehead, then eyes. Duan Jia Su closes his eyes. She doesn't lean too close to him. Her action is gentle and careful. Her fingers aren't touching his face. Duan Jia Su basically has never been taken care of like this. He never expects that someone will ever take care of him this way. He doesn't like to trouble someone. Moreover, this girl, though she is an adult now, but he still feels she is a kid. A kid that needs a lot of people to take care of. Then the towel touches his bridge of nose, cheeks, and chin. Duan Jia Su opens his eyes. His gaze bumps with Sang Ji. Her eyes are big and bright. Her double eyelids are folded clearly. Her eyelashes are long. After several seconds of staying that way, Duan Jia Su says lazily, Are you done? Done. Sang Ji withdraws her gaze and hand. Very quickly, she stands up. I'll go and wash the towel first. Then she goes out of the sick room. Her acting to be tough just crumbles when she goes out of the sick room. She tries to control her breathing and her quick heartbeats. No. She is okay when his eyes are closed. Why should he suddenly open his eyes? Couldn't he inform her? I want to open my eyes. Please get ready. Couldn't he do that? Couldn't he? It's too shocking. Shocking. Sang Ji recalls her previous response. Her response should be normal. It's not that extreme. She just acts normal. She isn't supercilious nor obsequious. She is relieved. At last, she has a conclusion. This will be her first time in her lifetime and also the last time to wipe his face. She returns to the sick room and opens up the folded chair for Kara. She sits down and thinks. She plans to use her coat as a blanket. She will improvise to sleep tonight. Duan Jia Su is not asleep yet. He notices what she does. He calls her. Sang Ji. Sang Ji looks over. What is it? Duan Jia Su, take my coat to support your body. Sang Ji says, oh. Today he was wearing a long coat. When it is spread out, it's bigger than her. Sang Ji spreads it out on the chair. Then she goes to turn off the light. Duan Jia Su doesn't say anything else. Sang Ji takes her phone out of her coat and sets the brightness to the lowest. She notices that Ning Wei has been calling her for several times. She is startled and suddenly remembers that she hasn't told her roommates that she will not be back tonight. She immediately opens up her WeChat and says in the group chat, Today I will not go home, the guh -gu who I know. Sang Ji thinks about it and just changes the words guh -gu to jia jia, older sister, then types, is sick. I am the hospital to take care of her. Sang Ji, I didn't see my phone before. Ning Wei, I, it's okay. I saw that you are not back yet. You also didn't answer your phone. You scared me. Ning Wei, also Jiang Ming seems to be looking for you. He said that you haven't replied him. 
I said to him that you're out with a friend, so you'll not go home. Sang Ji, okay. Sang Ji exits the group chat and scrolls down at her chat list. Since the last time, Ningwei's birthday, she rarely meets that person. He also never asks her out. They just chat casually a few times. She opens up the chat with Jiang Ming. She notices that he is sending her several funny pictures, then there are several short voice notes. She wants to convert it into sound, but her finger shakes and just opens it. The clear man's voice sounds. Sang Ji, are you free now? Sang Ji is so surprised and presses the off button. It's cut off. Sang Ji glances at Duan Jia Su, but because it's too dark, she couldn't be sure whether he is asleep or not. She waits for a while. Sang Ji doesn't hear any sound from him. She releases her heavy breath and just flips her body slowly. She switches on her phone and looks again. She doesn't dare to touch that several short voice notes. She plans to listen and reply it tomorrow. She looks at her schedule tomorrow. She knows that she wouldn't be able to attend the first class, so she asks Ning Wei. Tomorrow I will not be able to attend the first class. That time please take it for me. Okay. Sang Ji turns off her phone and places it on her side. She curls her body. She inhales and she could smell Duan Jia Su's scent from the coat under her. It's a mixture of faint cigarette scent and lime. It's like a scent of mature man. It gives her a bit of sense of security. Perhaps because it's unfamiliar situation, Sang Ji has trouble falling asleep. She couldn't help but to flip her body again. She wants to play her phone again. Sang Ji cautiously extends her hand to probe for her phone. But this time suddenly Duan Jia Su makes a sound. You couldn't sleep? Sang Ji pauses and nods. M. Because you didn't finish listen to the short voice note? Sang Ji looks at him. She is dejected. You heard it yet you pretended to be asleep. What pretending to be asleep? He laughs. I just don't say anything. You are pretending to be asleep. Sang Ji says gloomily. Why do you really like to eavesdrop? M? Weren't you the one that playing it loudly? How could you want to scam me again? Sangji knows that she couldn't win him. She just covers her head with her coat. I'll not talk to you. I want to sleep. Duan Jia Su, don't you have trouble to sleep? Sangji, though I have, I must sleep. Duan Jia Su, how about chat with Gu Gu? Sangji shows her eyes and looks at him. What should we chat? Do you want to play the short voice notes now? He sounds like he's joking. Let Gugu hears who wants to ask Garshao Sangji out. Sangji is unhappy. You also don't know him. Duan Jia Su, you say that I don't know him, then you could describe him a bit for me. Gugu will help you to check on. Before the time he said about her long skirt, he acts like Li Ping. Now he acts like Sang Rong. Sangji. He just wants to ask me for a meal. You also need to check on him. Duan Jia Su, isn't it because I am afraid that you are being deceived? Sang Ji says, oh, okay. She rubs her eyes and says, there are lots of things. I think I couldn't finish it in a night. You take a notebook to note it. Chapter 35 Hearing that Duan Jia Su inclines his head to one side to look at her. Under the dim light, his eyes are somewhat bright. He is smiling. He says with great interest. You couldn't finish it in one night? Yes, it is. Xiao Sangji is so popular, ah? Uh? Yes, ah. Uh. Sangji says reasonably. I am beautiful, ah. Uh. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows and says nothing. This sudden silence is like denying her words. Sangji feels a bit unhappy. She withdraws her gaze and takes her phone. Go sleep. Why should you pry about young person's life? Sang Ji snorts. You wouldn't understand too. Both of you brother sister are doing this in purpose, right? Duan Jia Su says, for the whole day you guys keep on attacking my age. Shouldn't you say it advance? Sang Ji looks at him. How did my Gu attack you? Aren't you guys at the same age? He feels he is young. Duan Jia Su laughs softly. Okay, let's start talk now. Sang Ji doesn't respond. What? Gu Gu will help you check him. He suddenly remembers something, then says teasingly, All right, Xiao Sang Ji brings Gu Gu a notebook. Gu Gu will take a good note of it. 
Sangji watches him for several seconds. Very quickly, she flips her body so her back is facing him. She turns on her phone again and just shows her unwillingness to chat anymore. I'll not tell you. The next morning, Sangji still doesn't act heartlessly. She helps to wipe his face, arms, and elbows. This time Duan Jia Su doesn't open up his eyes in sudden, he also says nothing. But Sang Ji doesn't look at him on the eyes. She tries hard to pretend to be uninterested. She is acting like she is wiping clean a non-living thing. Before leaving, Sang Ji considers about something and asks, Jia Su Ge, do you need anything? I'll bring it over for you at night. M? Um? Duan Jia Su seems still to be so sleepy with his half-opened eyes, I have keys inside my coat, you could take it. Help Gugu to bring the laptop inside my bedroom. Sangji says, what do you want to do with your laptop? Duan Jia Su opens his eyes and smiles, work. Sangji is startled and her expression turns unpleasant. Aren't you taking a day off? Moreover, you are sick now, why should you work? Your Lao Ban, boss, will also not give you an extra money. Duan Jia Su looks at her and says nothing. Sang Ji, I'll not bring it for you. I'll bring to you the other things. I'll leave now. Then she leaves the room. When she is in the metro, she opens up Jiang Ming's voice notes. Sang Ji, are you free now? I and friends will go to the sport game hall. Do you want to come? I heard from Ning Wei that you'll not be back to the dorm. It's late, it's not safe to be alone outside. Let me pick you up. She hesitates for a while and replies, I'm sorry, last night I didn't see my phone. Thank you for your care. Sang Ji returns to the dorm and takes a shower. She changes her clothes. Then she goes to the classroom building. On Friday, she has a lot of classes from the morning to the afternoon 6 p.m. She also has no time to eat. After the class, she just takes the metro and goes to Duan Jia Su's apartment. She exits the metro station and uses the maps on her phone to find his apartment. This art is a residential area. It's located beside the city library. But to go to Duan Jia Su's residential area, there is still few meters. Nearby there is a restaurant and small-sized supermarket. It's so lively. Sangji gets inside the gate with her card and finds the building. She takes the elevator to the 15th floor. In one floor, there are four apartments. Duan Jia Su's room is facing the south. She opens the door with the key. She is unfamiliar with his apartment and tries to switch on the light. The room is designed in dark color. The living room sofa and coffee tables are in dark gray color. The wall is painted in a similar color. The floor is made from wood and the middle there is a dark color square shaped carpet. On the sofa, there's a half opened book and beside it, there's tall reading lamp. The curtain is closed off. The room is feel a bit in low spirit. Sangji takes off her shoes and looks at the only slippers on the shoe cupboards. She hesitates whether she should wear it or not. At last, she just wears her socks and considers what should she bring for him. She looks around the living room. She notices there are three photo frames placed on shelves on top of the TV. One is the photo of Duan Jia Su and his all roommates with their own graduation robe. The next to it is the photo of Sangji and him during the graduation ceremony. It's the first time of her to see that photo. She couldn't help herself but to take a look for a moment. That time she was just as tall as his shoulder. She looked young and tender. She was wearing a light blue dress. She was standing 20 centimeter away from him. She was smiling that she showed her dimples. Duan Jia Su is placing his hand on her head. He looks careless and casual, but his smile is bright and cheerful. It's quite a good photo. Sangji licks her lips and takes out her phone to take photo of it. She then looks at the last photo frame. It's also a group photo. It's obvious it is an old photo. The hue of the photo is insane. In the photo, Duan Jia, Su looked like he was 10 years old. He was wearing his high school uniform. Beside him, there's a woman who is half head short than him. They both are smiling. She recall what Li Ping said to her, saying she suddenly understands this woman's identity. She kneels down and considers. She says slowly, A, E, Auntie, hi. I am Sang Ji, I am Jia Su Ji's friends Mei Mei. After a few seconds, she adds, Jia Su Gu yesterday didn't come home because he is sick. He had a minor operation, but it's nothing serious. Now I'm here to bring things for him. Don't worry. 
She says it and stands up. She takes her phone to search, things that are needed for hospitalization. She looks around and sees well-fitting clothes. Then she goes to his wardrobe. Why should she do this? She closes her eyes and opens up his wardrobe. She sees there are two boxes of underwear. She releases her breath and just throws it inside the bag. She looks in front and considers whether she should bring more clothes. Suddenly, she notices a familiar-looking tie. She remembers it was her birthday present to him, the last time she came to Ihi. Sang Ji suddenly just closes her wardrobe. Forget it. Just like that. She already be so magnanimous. Sang Ji leaves Duan Jia Su's apartment and waits to take the elevator. She looks at her phone and the time she puts it back inside the pocket, the elevator has arrived. Inside the elevator, there is a woman. Her face is delicate and pretty. She is wearing branded clothes, her perfume smells thick. She seems to be calling someone, but the call is unanswered so her face doesn't look good. That woman looks at Sang Ji and comes out of the elevator. Sang Ji just gets inside the elevator. The time the elevator is about to close. Sang Ji notices that the woman seems to walk to Duan Jia Su's apartment. But it's also possible that she goes to the other side of Duan Jia Su's unit. Sang Ji lowers her head and doesn't think too much of it. The time Sang Ji arrives at the hospital, it's almost 8 p.m. She gets inside the sick room and notices that the empty patient's bed now is occupied by a 70 years old Yi Yi old man. Beside him, there's a middle aged man who looks like his son. Three men are chatting. Sang Ji places bag on the table. Duan Jia Su notices a movement, so he turns his head to look over. Why are you bringing a lot of things? Sang Ji is tired that she couldn't speak. She pants. She immediately sits down on the chair and takes off her coat. It's nothing much. I feel you need it. Duan Jia Su looks at the bag and says, Why are you bring lots of clothes for me? I just bring two sets and a coat, which you could wear if you are cold. Sang Ji takes out a bottle from her backpack and drinks it. I also bring a charger for you. Duan Jia Su, um, have you eaten your meal? Not yet. Sang Ji just remembers about this. She doesn't feel hungry. After the class, I just went to your apartment and come here. I don't have time. I'll go eat in a while. Duan Jia Su looks at her. It's 8 p.m. How could you have not eat? Sang Ji takes out a bar of chocolate and chews it, then takes her phone out too. She answers him. I am not very hungry. In a while, I'll go and eat. Go and eat now. Sang Ji looks at him. She is unhappy. I am not saying that I'll not eat. I just arrived here with lots of things. Couldn't you let me sit and rest for a while? The Lao Yi Yi in the next bed suddenly speaks up. He is smiling and saying, Xiao Hua Zi, young man, this is your wife all? Sang Ji's anger just disappears in a flash. She suddenly raises up her head and almost chokes up. Duan Jia Su suddenly laughs. His voice sounds preposterous. Da Yi, how could you see this my wife? Lao Yi Yi looks at Sang Ji and says kindly, this young woman is very pretty. Because Sang Ji is sensitive and easily be embarrassed. Duan Jia Su speaks up, Da Yi, this my may not my wife. Hearing this, Lao Yi Yi looks at Duan Jia Su. I, I know your wife looks very beautiful. Sang Ji. Duan Jia Su. The middle-aged man speaks up at this time. He feels embarrassed. I'm sorry. My pa has trouble of hearing. So before he didn't really speak up. Then the middle-aged man leans closer to his papa and raises his voice. Pa, that is his Mei Mei. She is not his wife. She is Mei Mei, not wife. Lao Yi Yi just says, ah. He nods. They aren't married? Sang Ji is a bit impatient. She couldn't help but to speak up. Yi Yi, no, we are not that kind of that relationship. Xiao Hua Zi, I see that you are not young anymore. How are you still unmarried? Lao Yi Yi said, you couldn't let this young girl wait too long for you. Sang Ji feels suffocated. Duan Jia Su couldn't help to laugh. Da Yi, are you joking to me? My belly has an injury. Lao Yi Yi says seriously, Xiao Hua Zi, I am not joking to you. Your girlfriend really looks pretty. She is good at taking care of people too. If you don't cherish her, you will regret it later on. Duan Jia Su gives up to fight it. 
Okay, I understand. Sang Ji isn't giving up yet. Yi Yi, it's not true. Xiao Hua Zi, you should treat her well. Lao Yi Yi says sincere words and earnest wishes. She even bring lots of things for you. Don't give her cold shoulder. Duan Jia Su nods. Okay. Sang Ji couldn't endure this anymore. I'll leave now. Duan Jia Su looks back at her and notices Sang Ji's expression. He restrains himself to smile. He coughs and pretends to be serious. Don't mind this. He just has trouble hearing. Just think that he is joking. Okay. Sang Ji just pretends not to hear it and releases her heavy breath. She says, Yi Yi, I am really not his girlfriend. He is much older than me. He could be my papa. Duan Jia Su. Um, it's good to be papa. Lao Yi Yi nods and approves this. You guys should marry early. Then give birth to a chubby baby. Being steady is good thing. Sang Ji also gives up now. She looks at Duan Jia Su. Jia Su Go, I'll leave now. Duan Jia Su holds his wound with a hand and tries hard to control his laughter. He says hoarsely, Okay, be careful. Remember to have dinner. Sang Ji straightens her lips and wears her coat. M. Duan Jia Su, when you are back at the dorm, call me. Sang Ji, oh. She simply doesn't want to mind that Loa Yi Yi, but for keeping being polite. She forces herself to say goodbye to them. She says goodbye quickly and then goes out of the sick room. In a next second, she could hear the Lao Yi Yi says. I, your wife is going home? Duan Jia Su just be indifferent and laughs. Um, my wife is going home. Why he always be? That's shameless. For the next six days, Sang Ji as usual comes over when she is free. The old Yi Yi is still there. He seems quite have lots of daughters and sons as every day the one that takes care of him is a different person. He has a lot of words as he frequently chats with Duan Jia Su and Sang Ji. But it always about that topic. It seems that only be interested with that thing. Just like now. Lao Yi Yi is watching both of them. He says kindly. When are you guys planning to get married? Duan Jia Su says lazily. We are not getting married. We are not in that kind of relationship. Lao Yi Yi immediately straightens his face and clearly disapproves it. How could you guys are not getting married? How could you hold up this young woman's life? Sang Ji. Lao Yi Yi urges them again earnestly and maternally. Marry early so you guys could have a steady life. Marriage is not a frightening thing. You guys are suitable for each other. Be together. Your days will be well. Duan Jia Su raises his eyes. Okay. Lao Yi Yi asks again. Then when do you plan to get married? Duan Jia Su looks at Sang Ji. It's been days since he shaved his beard. He looks more mature. He says, this young girl hasn't reached the legal age to get married. Let's wait for another two years. At last Sang Ji just ignores both of them conversation. Every time they start to chat, she will wear her earphone and acts like she doesn't hear it. After a week, Duan Jia Su is discharged. That day Sang Ji comes over and helps him to tidy up all the things. Before leaving, the Lao Yi Yi is sitting on his bed and looks at them. He smiles and says, are you being discharged? Duan Jia Su, M, Lao Yi Yi, take care of your health and get better soon. Lao Yi nods, you both should live well. Duan Jia Su wants to say something, but Sang Ji speaks up first. We know. Duan Jia Su looks at her. Sang Ji looks at him again. She looks at him intensely. Then she says, we will get married as soon as possible. Intermezzo. Duan Jia Su, M. Sang Ji, forget it, I also want to be shameless. Chapter 36. They goes out of the sick room. Duan Jia Su looks at her. Today he wears his own clothes. He wears an army green short jacket. In the inside, he is wearing a white sweatshirt and black trousers. He has shaved his beard cleanly, so she looks a few years younger. He looks like a college student. He quietly leans forward and looks at Sang Ji on the eyes. He seems to find it's interesting to hear her said those words. He smiles and jokes. Get married as soon as possible? Sang Ji looks at him. Isn't it because of you doing? Looking that she isn't in a good mood, Duan Jia Su raises his eyes and stands up. You are angry? It's a several seconds of silence. I'm not angry, I'm just... Sang Ji stops walking and says seriously toward him. 
in the future don't joke around like that, though she knows it's a joke. But because she as clearly knows that he will not really like him, so she doesn't think it's funny. He could be magnanimous and thinks of this as a joke. His expression is natural. Saying she lowers her head and wants to say something, but she doesn't speak it out. She suddenly wants to vent her anger. She keeps on walking. Let's go. Later on, I have things to do. Duan Jia Su stops laughing and walks slowly. He walks behind her. You are really angry? No. Gugu had stayed at the hospital for too long, so I was too idle. Duan Jia Su rubs his neck and says, Gugu apologizes to you, okay? No need. Sang Ji lowers her head and says, Just don't do this again in the future. Looking at her expression, Duan Jia Su's feeling is hard to describe. After a while, he says, Gugu, is that lacking? Could make Xia Sang Ji be this unhappy? Sang Ji looks at him. She is expressionless, but he looks like he is joking. Looking at this, she just adds another thing to make suffocated. Sang Ji says, Seriously, you could. Gugu, I don't have any other intention. I just want to be honest. Sang Ji says gently, After hearing this, I will go home and cry for a night. For his illness, Duan Jia Su gets a half month holiday. After being discharged, he could stay at home and recover. They go out of the hospital and take taxi to Duan Jia Su's apartment. Duan Jia Su only has a pair of slippers. He looks at it. He doesn't wear it and just passes the slippers to Sang Ji. Then he takes all his clothes to the laundry room. He then returns all the things to its place. The slippers seem to be too big for Sang Ji, so she could only walk slowly. Then Sang Ji sits down beside Duan Jia Su. She takes out a pile of sticky notes. Duan Jia Su stays on the sofa and plays game. Sang Ji opens up her phone and uses her browser to search about what matters needing attention after the operation. She also notes what the doctor said to them before discharged. She looks at it and then starts to copy all out to the sticky notes. Noticing her movement, Duan Jia Su looks over and asks, What are you writing? I'm writing all the matters needing attention after being discharged. Sang Ji explains, I'll write everything and then stick it on the fridge. You should mind it when you are eating. It's Sang Ji first time to take care of people, so she doesn't really good at it. For a lot of things she could miss, she could find in the internet. Duan Jia Su stops and M. Oh, right. Don't keep on sitting down. You should move and walk for a while. Sang Ji says, then don't carry too heavy object or do any intense workout. Okay. Also, if you need anything, you could tell me. If I have free time, I'll come and buy it for you. Sangji says calmly, maybe in normal time, I possibly couldn't come. You should take care of yourself well. M. Recently, I get a lot of homework. We also are in our end of semester. I should prepare for examination. Sangji raises her head and looks at him. At first, I want to treat you a meal, but let's wait till you are better. No need Chao Sangji to treat me. Duan Jia Su laughs lightly. Gugu will treat you. Sang Ji blinks her eyes. Let's see that time. She puts down her pen and stands up. She sticks the sticky notes on the fridge. Then Sang Ji returns to her living room and wears her coat. Then Gugu, I'll leave first. Duan Jia Su stands up. I'll send you to take the bus. Sang Ji shakes her head. It's better for you to rest for a while. You just came home from the school. The metro station isn't that far from here. I know the way well. Sang Ji wears her shoes and waves her hand to him. Good go, goodbye. Without waiting for his reply, Sang Ji goes out of the apartment. A light bang. The door is closed. The room becomes silent. Duan Jia Su hasn't really responded. He exits his game and goes to wear his coat. He goes out of the apartment too, yet he couldn't see Sang Ji's figure again. He straightens his lips and returns back to the apartment. He walks toward his fridge and sees all the things that she wrote. It's been years. Her writing is getting even nicer and neater. She isn't writing like she used to. She didn't spend an hour for writing 500 words. Duan Jia Su touches her writing. He suddenly remembers what happened at the hospital. When the Lao Yi in the same sick room as him kept on praising Sang Ji in front of him and thinking her as his wife. Your girlfriend really looks pretty. 
She is good at taking care of people too. After a long time, Duan Jia Su returns to the living room and laughs. In December, Ihi City's temperature has reached under zero Celsius. Because of the weather and upcoming examination, the department has stopped all the activities. Sang Ji feels so cold that she doesn't want to move. Every day except going to the class, she just stays inside her dorm room to draw design to make video. Duan Jia Su doesn't ask her for any help. Sometimes he just looks for her for saying that the day is cold and asking her to take care of herself. Sang Ji changes Duan Jia Su's WeChat remarks as Guga number two, Guga two how, just like the way she calls him when she was little girl. She wants to toughen up his identity as her Guga, like Sang Yen. Sang Ji suddenly feels it's quite good. She tries hard to cut off her thought to make this impossible thinking goes away. To let her silent crush completely throughly disappears. She doesn't want to take unnecessary pain to study an insignificant problem. She doesn't think that this lifetime, she will only be able to love one person. Even Sangji still starts to expect it. In the future one day, she would throughly have no feeling toward him. He would bring a woman in front of her and say to her that she is his girlfriend. She would not be sad anymore. Her only thought will be he finally has a companion to spend his rest of life. She even would call that woman Sazi easily. On the last night of 2015, her three other roommates are going out with other people to step into the new year. Sangji has no interest on it. She refuses several other people's invitation. She plans to order takeaway, has a shower, watches movie, then sleeps. She will plan this night that way. But before her plan is executed, Duan Jia Su calls her. Sang Ji is chewing her potato chips when she answers it. Duan Jia Su says lazily, Xiao Sang Ji, what are you doing? Sang Ji looks at the time and says, I am preparing to get ready for calling takeaway. What takeaway? Jia Su smiles, come and spend the holiday with Gu Gu. Sang Ji says, I don't want to go out. Duan Jia Su says, then come and accompany Guga to eat. Um, why aren't you talking? Duan Jia Su says slowly, Aren't you going to treat me? You want to go break your promise. Sang Ji closes her pack of potato chips. How could I go break my promise? You never mention it to me. Duan Jia Su, now come out, I'm waiting outside your university. Sang Ji couldn't help but to us. In the past, didn't you say that I don't need to treat you? Duan Jia Su says, Ah, he acts like he couldn't remember it. Did I say that kind of words? This person is strange. For every festival day, he will come and look for her. It seems that he thinks that she is alone here. If she spends it alone, it's too miserable. For the Christmas day, he also looked for her, but hearing that she spent it with her roommates, he said nothing. Sang Ji hangs up and changes her clothes quickly. She wears her scarf and looks at the mirror. She feels that her face isn't looked great. She hesitates for a while and applies a light lipsticks. She goes out of the school and wants to call Duan Jia Su. When she looks over, she notices his car. She also looks that he is sitting on the driver's seat and waiting for her. Sang Ji comes over and gets on the front passenger seat. She calls obediently, Gu Gu. Then she buckles up. Duan Jia Su looks at her. Why aren't you going out to play around? Cold. Sangji says honestly, I don't want to go out. Why are you acting like an elderly in your young age? Duan Jia Su laughs and moves the car. What do you want to eat? Sangji has nothing she really wants to eat. You could decide. Duan Jia Su, then hot pot. Sangji nods, okay. I'll choose the restaurant? M. Um. Duan Jia Su drives the car to the SCBD area near his residential area. This area is nearer to the city library. It's not that far from Ihi University. The hot pot store is a chain store. It has four to five branches in Ihi. It's popular so when they arrive there, there are few people are queuing. Sangji never tries this restaurant so the time she smells the fragrance, she is interested. She goes to take the number to queue. They both wait for a while before they get the table. Duan Jia Su passes the menu to her and let her orders it. 
Thinking about Duan Jia Su's recent operation, Sangji orders a clear soup. Then she orders several meats, veggies according to what most people like. The time she looks at beef slices, she is twisted a while then she just orders a portion of it. Very quickly, Sangji passes the menu to him. Guh guh, take a look what do you want to eat. Duan Jia Su just looks at what she ordered and takes a pen. He just crosses out the beef slices and changes it into cuttlefish ball. Just like this. Sangji glances at him and tries to control her anger by playing her phone. Duan Jia Su pours the tea to her glass and asks, When is your examination? Next month on the 11th. Then when will you go home? When I'm done with all the examination. Sangji thinks about it. Maybe on the 20th. Duan Jia Su, remember to buy ticket early. Before the new year, it's hard to find ticket. Sangji nods, I know. They both just chat casually. Very quickly, the table next to them is done. The waiter quickly tidies it up and brings two young women get inside. This time, the other waiter also brings a base soup for the hot pot. Sangji puts down the phone and looks over. She notices that one of that two young women looks familiar, but for time being, she couldn't remember where she met her. That young woman seems to recognize Duan Jia Su. Looking at him, her smile just disappears. She just lets go of her friend's elbow and comes over. She says arrogantly, Duan Jia Su. Duan Jia Su is still talking with Sangji. The time he hears that young woman's voice, he pauses and looks over. Sangji also looks over. That woman doesn't really look pretty. She just looks delicate. She is wearing a fine makeup. She is gloomy and a bit unkind. If I don't meet you here, I will really think that you are dead. She approaches Sangji. Sangji could smell her perfume. Sangji remembers that she had met this young woman in the elevator of Duan Jia Su's apartment. Sangji then looks at Duan Jia Su. He also doesn't look at that woman and pretends like he doesn't listen to her words. He just takes the teapot to pour herself a tea. That woman says, you didn't see my calls? Sangji pursues her lips and suddenly feels awkward to sit down here. She tries hard to reduce her existence and takes out her phone to play it. You called me. Duan Jia Su holds up her phone and then he smiles gently. He says, uh, I add you to my blacklist on my phone. You blacklist me? Then woman starts to explode. What is your right to blacklist me? D asterisk MM asterisk T. You should work like an ox for me this lifetime. Her voice is loud and too provoking. Sangji looks at her again and seems a bit surprised by it. That woman's friend holds her and seems to be confused, showing what happened. Who is he? Then Sangji watches that woman struggles free from her friend's hold and suddenly takes a glass full of water on the table and she just splashes it powerfully toward Duan Jia Su's face. He is unprepared, so he couldn't dodge it off. He just has time to close his eyes. The boiling water drenches his body. From his hair, the water slides into his forehead, bridge of noise, lips, and chin. It drops one by one. Sangji is startled and looks at his current appearance. She suddenly feels her blood is boiling, her anger is upsurging. She has lost her rationality. She clenches her fist and suddenly stands up. She takes a glass of water too and holds it up on that woman's head. She starts to pour the water on top of that woman's head. That woman's attention is on Duan Jia Su's, so she couldn't respond. She just screams and howls, Who are you ah? Uh? Why are you acting so crazily? Hearing this, Duan Jia Su opens his eyes. He seems also not think that Sangji will do this kind of thing. He watches Sangji and be startled for a while. She is acting like protecting a bunny. Sangji blocks that woman by standing in front of him and asks, What crazy thing are you doing? Could you control me? That woman starts to be pushy. Do you know why I splashed him? Why should I care about the reason? Sangji cuts her off and says, A.E. Auntie. If you raise a hand to strike, who will have interest to talk reasonably with you? Also, let alone splashing water to him, if you dare to hit him, I definitely will hit you back. She says coldly, I wouldn't think it's something too dirty to do. That woman is somewhat shamed into anger. She blushes and she just raises her hand high. Looking at her actin, 
Duan Jia Su immediately stands up and pulls Sang Ji to stand up behind him. He looks at that woman and smiles. It's not permissible. I think it's something dirty to do. This time, the waiter of this hot pot restaurant comes over and in a kindly manner advises them to stop arguing. The woman is dragged away, but her girlfriend. She seems to find it too embarrassing so they don't stay, but her eyes are fixed on Duan Jia Su. She acts like malevolent demon. The atmosphere turns relieved. Everyone inside the restaurant keeps on watching them. Zhang Ji's sudden imposing manner just vanishes in a flash. She completely couldn't eat anything. She goes to the cashier and pays for it. Then she pulls Duan Jia Su's out of the hot pot store. She takes out tissue and passes it to him. Duan Jia Su takes it and doesn't move. His gaze is fixed on Sang Ji. His eyes are dark and indescribable. His unmoving state makes Sang Ji feels impatient. She just takes several tissues again and stands on her tiptoe to help him wipe dry the water on his head. Sang Ji recalls about that moment and her eyes turn red. She says unhappily, who is that woman? An unrelated person. Duan Jia Su regains herself again. He bends his waist and considers for a while. To think about it carefully, she is my pa's former creditor. Sangji looks at him and says casually, last time I went your house, I think I saw her. She thinks about it and asks, does she always act like that every time she meets you? Duan Jia Su is silent for a few seconds. It's not that far off. It's too shocking. Sangji takes few tissues again and helps to wipe clean his forehead. She mumbles, does she have a trouble to controlling her emotion? She just said few words and suddenly act with her hand. Duan Jia Su smiles and pretends to be indifferent. Maybe I really did something unforgivable to her? Sang Ji looks at him. Didn't you say that she is your papa's former creditor? M? Duan Jia Su says, but I also don't know whether it could be said former. Your papa's former creditor. Sang Ji considers about it seriously and says earnestly, no matter whether it is former or not. She is also your papa's former creditor. It's unrelated to you. It's unrelated to you. Duan Jia Su's heart beats so fast. His mood changes. He suddenly raises his head and looks at her. Sang Ji is so serious. She takes another tissue to wipe the remaining water. Luckily, the water isn't too hot, though his skin has turned red, but it seems to not scalding. She continues to say, Anyway, I just saw that she just splashed you without any reason. My Gu said that if we are mistreated, we shouldn't tolerate it. Sang Ji then looks at him. Duan Jia Su is still looking at her. Their gaze meet each other. In a flash. It's like the time she helps him to wipe his face. That time this intimate contact and close range gaze made him took initiative to shift his gaze. Like he is losing in that battle. This time they are standing closer than before. Her eyes are really beautiful, clean and limpid. In front of him, she has no shield around her. For protecting him, she acted completely different. Actually, she changes a lot. The baby's fat on her face is gone. Her facial features is getting finer and beautiful. Indeed, she doesn't look Xiao Hai again. He keeps on not minding it, also keeps on ignores it. But now indeed she is different. Duan Jia Su looks at her face carefully and in detailed. Her skin is smooth, her lips are full and rosy. He even could feel her light breath. It has rhythm and tickles his face. They are looking at each other for a while. Seems to be a few minutes, but it feels longer. Duan Jia Su's Adam Apple Bobs. Sang Ji suddenly regains herself, then hesitates to strike back. Gu Gu, wipe it by yourself. Duan Jia Su turns silent and replies, M. She is afraid that he will feel that her response is too unexpected. Sangji hesitates and explains, You are too tall. If I help you to wipe, you need stoop. She says it and passes him tissues. Here's the tissue. After a while, he also doesn't take it. Sangji lifts up her head and looks at his eyes. Duan Jia Su's eyelashes are still wet. His eyes are looking at her like he is enticing her. He stands straight and looks at her. Sang Ji couldn't make out what he is thinking. She just feels unease to being stared at, though she doesn't feel that she exposes anything. 
She flies into rage out of humiliating and says, What is it? Nothing. Duan Jia, Su coughs lightly. I forget to say. Thank you, Xiao Sangji, to protect Gogo. -Go. Sangji says, Oh, no need. She looks around and suggests, Do you want to go nearby to buy a cloth to change into? Without his response, Sangji turns her head and looks at him again. She frowns and suspects that there might be something on her face. She says confusedly, why are you keep on gazing at me? Really? Duan Jia Su withdraws his gaze and smiles, then I'll not look again. Sangji asks, let's go there. Duan Jia Su smiles, okay. Why are you keep on smiling? Sangji couldn't help but to ask, are you turning stupid after being splashed? Um, I think so. Maybe after an illness, it lets his mind be unclear. Also, perhaps it's because of the Lao Yi as words, a weekdays and nights brainwashing. Maybe it is because of that glass of water. It somehow makes his mind be muddle-headed. This moment. Duan Jia Su suddenly really wants to be a brute. Chapter 37. Sang Ji feels that his response is too shocking. What happened to this old man? Is it because her response is too emotional? But if she just stayed silent and watched him be mistreated and did nothing like those onlookers who are interested in the spectacle but don't have anything knowledgeable to say about it, could she be regarded as a person? Sang Ji feels that her action is appropriate. Good, good. Don't take that accident into your heart. Sang Ji thinks about it and says, When I was in grade 8 and I was being blackmailed, you also helped me. Duan Jia Su, M. Sang Ji adds, now you are old, it's my turn to help you. Just in time they pass a trash can, Sangji throws in the tissues. The time she looks at him, she notices that Duan Jia Su's expression is rigid, his smile is gone. He looks more normal. He seems to have collect all his thoughts. Then Sangji watches him. Duan Jia Su lowers his eyes, straightens his lips. He knows that his thought is too absurd. I'm really crazy. Right, he looks a bit crazy. But being splashed by another woman in public, indeed it's quite hurting one's pride. Sang Ji doesn't know how to comfort him, she gets inside the men's clothes store. She changes the subject, guh guh, hurry up change into this one. It's uncomfortable to wear wet clothes. Duan Jia Su doesn't move. Sang Ji takes another shirt and stuffs it to his hand. If not, just this one. He just responds, M. The time he gets into the fitting room, Sangji strolls around the store. She notices a shirt and holds it up. Suddenly her phone rings. Sangji takes out her phone and looks at the caller ID. She answers it, Gu. Sang Yen says lazily, Xiao Gue, what date is your holiday start? I'll help you to book the ticket. Sangji frowns, why should you rush it? There's still half month to go. You book it by yourself? You just need to transfer the money to me. I'll book it by myself. What money I should transfer to you? Am I your pa? Oh, papa. It's the end of the month. You should give the living cost. Sang Ji touches the man's coat in front of her. Good, good. You already drag it till the last day. If you don't transfer the money today, then don't need to transfer again. Just use those money to buy me a coffin. Sang Yen laughs coldly. Every month you take double living costs. Aren't you shameless? How could you say it's double? Sang Ji doesn't even blink. She says boldly and confidently. Papa said that he will give half and you half. Is the commodity price in Ihi that expensive? Sang Yen asks that you need 6,000? Sang Ji looks at the cloth size and flips around. I even economize on food and living. I even a bit unwilling to buy candy. If not, I'll overspend. Are their candies cost a thousand for pack? No, Sangji's tone is flat. A thousand for one piece. Sang Yin says, Okay, just think I have no Mimi like you. Sangji is silent for a few seconds and says, Coffin. Sang Yin just hangs up. Sangji hears the cold voice of tut tut tut. She looks at the screen and shrugs her shoulder indifferently. She just places her phone back into her pocket. She continues to find a size and finds XXL size. She takes it. 
Sangji turns her body and notices that Duan Jia Su has changed his clothes. Before she just gave him a black sweatshirt and even didn't look at the size. This time she notices it's well fitted him. Sangji takes the XXL size shirt to his front and asks, just this one. Duan Jia Su looks at her and says, you are calling your guh? Yes, he asked me whether I have booked ticket or not. Sangji says honestly, then pass the shirt on her hand to him. Guh guh, help me to try this one out. Hearing a word, help, Duan Jia Su just takes it and asks, to whom will you give this? My guh ah. Sangji looks around. New Year's gift. I'll also buy one for Papa so later on I don't need to stroll around again. Sangji lifts her head and points to the sweatshirt that Duan Jia Su wears. Oh right, do you like this one? Duan Jia Su, is it good? It's quite good. Okay, just this one. Sangji nods and takes out her phone to take a look. Just in time, she notices that there is a transfer notification from Alipay. She opens it up. Sang Yen transfers you 5,000 yuan. Remark, next time we meet up, don't call me Go. Is this his way to sever their relationship? It's too heartless. Sang Ji blinks and replies quickly, okay. She chooses another shirt and goes to the cashier to pay it. Duan Jia Su takes off his coat and takes out his own phone. He comes forward like he wants to directly buy those three clothes. I let me pay. Sang Ji doesn't want him to spend his money. She just pushes his phone away and immediately opens her Alpay app and says to the cashier, I'll pay for this together. She says it and turns her head to look at him. She says seriously, Guh Guh, this cloth, just think of it my advanced New Year gift for you. Okay. Duan Jia Su laughs. Next time, I'll make it up to you. Hearing those two people's conversation, the cashier looks at both of them. She asks curiously, are you both brother and sister? Sangji startles and turns quiet for a few minutes. She nods, um. The cashier, you two aren't looking similar. Are you really blood related? Duan Jia Su stands on the side and takes a look at his phone. His appearance looks indifferent. He listens to her answer. Sangji, um, more or less. Maybe because of what that woman did to her afterwards, Duan Jia Su doesn't talk that much. He keeps on thinking and his mind is wandering. At first, Sang Ji plans this period of time to talk less to him as she could. But looking at him, she could only rack her brain to look for topics of conversation. She wants him to forget all of it. Looking at her action with confusion, Duan Jia Su immediately laughs and seems to not thinking about that matter again. He jokes with her. Sang Ji doesn't know where to start. They both go to the nearby noodle store to have dinner. It's not early, so Duan Jia Su sends Sang Ji back to her dorm. Then he drives back to his own apartment. Duan Jia Su takes his card and gets into the apartment building. He takes the elevator to the 15th floor. The time he exits the elevator, he could see a woman who is standing in front of his apartment door. He stops there and remembers what Sang Ji said to him. Then he takes out his phone and calls the real estate's number. That woman's expression is very bad. She seems to have been waiting for him for quite some time. Finally, you know that you should come home? I thought today you will go and check in at the hotel with that university student. The call is answered. He acts like he doesn't listen to that woman's words. Duan Jia Su's voice is cold. He says calmly, I'm the resident of Tower 12, 15th floor B. In front of my apartment door, there's a stranger. Please help me to come here and handle this. Thank you. She suddenly yells, Duan Jia Su. Duan Jia Su hangs up and takes out his cigarette box. He lights one and smokes it. He leans on the wall and says nothing. That woman's eyes are red. Who is that woman? I'm asking you. Duan Jia Su looks tired. He doesn't move. He doesn't reply her. That woman suddenly walks toward his front and raises up her hand like she is about to slap him. He notices her movement. Duan Jia Su looks over and watches her. He smiles, but there's no gentleness. She is getting angry. She just wants to slap him. Duan Jia Su turns his head and raises up his cigarette. That cigarette touches her naked palm. That woman withdraws her hand and feels in pain. She glares at him and says, how could you be so lowly? Looking at her tears, 
Duan Jia Su says, It seems it's quite painful. No, looking at you be so in pain. Duan Jia Su laughs, How could I be so happy? How could you have face to be like me? That woman suddenly starts to cry while watches at him. Your whole family owe me. Duan Jia Su ignores her and bypasses her. He takes out his key out of his pocket. Today that woman is your girlfriend? Don't ever think about it. A person like you. Have no right to live a good life. Duan Jia Su just pretends like he doesn't listen to it and opens the door. That woman seems want to use force to get in. Then she senses that he isn't afraid to slap his door on her. She stops. Duan Jia Su, your whole family will suffer bad death. She slaps the door. She cries and says, so your ma just dead, you. He closes the door and just blocks all her words. Duan Jia Su throws away his cigarette and goes to the bathroom to throw it. He opens his tap water and cleans his hands cleanly, including his arms, that touched by Jiang Ying. Very quickly, Duan Jia Su goes to the living room and looks at the photo frames on the TV shelf. Duan Jia Su walks over and kneels down. He smiles. Ma, did you hear those words? Don't take it to heart. His mom's smile still looks so gentle. Duan Jia Su touches her face and smiles. Don't you think she is great that after these years, she always says those words. Duan Jia Su goes to the bathroom to have a shower. The time he is done, it's almost 12 p.m. He sits down on the sofa and opens up his television. The sound of TV makes the living room sounds a bit livelier. Suddenly, he remembers that idea. He looks at the photo again. This time, he looks at the photo of him and Sangji. That time, she is just a 15 years old young girl. It's taken from his university graduation. She was just finished her junior high school. She even thinks of him as her gu gu. Duan Jia Su closes his eyes and lights up another cigarette again. The time it's 01 a.m. Duan Jia Su's phone rings. It cuts off his thought. He lifts his eyes lazily and looks at his phone. It's a message from Sangji. Duan Jia Su opens it up. Xiao Sangji, wishing Jia Su Gu a happy new year. Be happy every day. Duan Jia Su, M, happy new year. Xiao Sangji, I'll sleep now, you should sleep early too. Duan Jia Su, okay. He opens up Sangji's contact list. He changes her remark to Sangji, then thinks about it, then changes it again to Zhizhi. Then after a while, he changes it back to Xiao Sangji. Duan Jia Su remembers the last night he spent at Sang's family house, hearing that he has a lot of debts. That young girl just stood beside him and said, don't worry, gu gu. When I grow up, I will earn money and help you to return it together. Duan Jia Su remembers what Jiang Ying said to him. A person like you have no right to live a good life. Duan Jia Su straightens his lips. Um, I don't. He turns off his screen, his face is gentle. He mumbles lowly, but our Xiao Sang Ji must live a good life. Chapter 38 Perhaps because of today's matter. At night, Duan Jia Su has a dream. He dreams about when he got the admission notice from Nan Wu University. A week before registration, his mother, Su Ruashu, prepared the money for him to go to the college, but those money once again snatched away by so what creditor. He dreams that night. Their apartment was already sold. They rented an apartment with a living room and a bedroom. The bedroom was for Su Ruashu to sleep, and he slept in the living room. During the summer vacation, Duan Jia Su looked for several jobs as private tutor and part-time jobs. So every day he would go home late. That day the time he returned home, he heard Su Ruashu was on the phone. She was calling her Debo, brother-in-law, one who always helped her when she raised her only son. In the living room, Su Ruashu called and greeted him. Daga, our Su has passed an university exam of Nanwu University. Then she turned silent for a while. It seemed hard to speak about it. There are lots of things behind her sentence. She couldn't hide it. Nanwu University is a good university. My son passes that examination to enter that university. But I have no money. For attending that university, he finds himself a lot of part-time jobs to earn money. It's all my bad. Could you? 
Lend me several thousand. The next moment, Debo starts to call her names. Aren't you guys shameless? Are you guys the only one that suffer? What is my duty to help you guys? I also have kids to raise up. I also want to live. You keep on borrowing money. Wow, go away. Duan Jiasu immediately went over and took the phone from her. He hung up. The room turned quiet. Su Ruashu stays silent for a while, then suddenly covers her eyes. She starts to cry. She mumbles, Mama let you down. Mama let you down. When he was in junior high school, Duan Jia Su never lacked of money. So he never feels that money is important. But when the accident happened, he just knows that money can give a lot of changes in life. Duan Jia Su watched at his mother, who used to be bright and confident, gradually crumbled. She changes to be timid and inferior. She fell ill and aged quickly. That time Duan Jia Su, who was just barely an adult, knelt down in front of Su Ruashu. He looks at her and smiles, Ma, do you believe me? Those money, I will earn it back. You don't need to borrow from anyone else. I'll earn my own money. I'll support you. He said gently, I will let you go back to live your good life. So, just wait, okay? Duan Jia Su wakes up from that dream. The sky is not dark, the room is still dark. He doesn't have any kind of sleepiness on him. He stands up and goes out to his bedroom to the living room. He pours a glass of water and takes out two ice cubes to put it inside the glass. Now it's 3 a.m. Duan Jia Su stands up beside the dining table and takes his phone. He notices that Qian Fei is going crazy in their group chat. Qian Fei, brothers. Qian Fei, I, will, get married. Qian Fei, ha 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 ha. Qian Fei, my proposal is a success. Qian Fei, I am too emotional that I couldn't sleep, but I want to tell you guys. Ha ha ha. Qian Fei, are you guys sleeping? Duan Jia Su replies, no. The next moment, his phone rings. Qian Fei calls him. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows and takes his glass to go to the living room. He answers the call. La Su, how could you not sleep at this time? Qian Fei acts as carefree as he uses to be. You also have no S asterisk X life. Duan Jia Su laughs lightly and says, bye. Qian Fei says, wait, I haven't said anything to you. Do you know did I propose? Today isn't it a night to step into the new year? Duan Jia Su leans on the sofa and listens to him. After a while, Qian Fei finishes his sharing of this experience. He says excitedly, what is it? Awesome, right? M. Tonight, why don't you say anything to me? M. Maybe because you want to get married. Duan Jia Su says carelessly, it's too heartbroken. In the past, didn't you say that it's passable just to be with me? Qian Fei says, don't make myself feel disgusted. That time I was so drunk. How could you still remember it? Duan Jia Su doesn't joke anymore. He smiles. Okay, congrats, bro. I write. He laughs. Last time did you do the blind date? I just mentioned it to you as casually. Duan Jia Su says lazily. To how many people have you talked about this? No, how couldn't we find the one? Qian Fei says, if not you could come to Nanwu, a lot of women from our university like you. I'll prepare a blind date for you, then you could choose the one that you like. Duan Jia Su laughs lowly, just spare me. If I look like you, damn it, I'll change my girlfriend each day. Aren't you afraid that your wife will hear it? She's not here. I really curious. You should have someone that you like, right? M. Qian Fei is surprised. Then what about someone that you have good opinion with? Duan Jia Su is silent like he is agreeing tacitly. Qian Fei immediately says, Wow, there's a situation. Who is it? Duan Jia Su makes a lie. You don't know her. She is a bit younger. How old she is? Qian Fei says, She wouldn't be still not born yet? He laughs. Not that young. If it's underage, I'll not say anything. But if she is an adult and you don't dare to chase after her, then I'll look down on you. You are done, right? You should sleep now. Duan Jia Su doesn't want to chat about this matter again. 
Married man. You aren't done yet. Bye. Duan Jia Su hangs up. Then he goes to the front of his television. He takes his photo with Sang Ji, then goes back to the bedroom. He places it on the bedside cabinet. Duan Jia Su looks at it for several seconds. No matter how he look at it, she is still a kid. What is he thinking about? Maybe it's because he has been single for a long time. Duan Jia Su sighs and says three words like his reminder. Xiao Peng Yu, little friend. Sang Ji feels that tonight Duan Jia Su is a bit strange. Then she recalls what happened and feels a bit worried whether her response was too intense or not. But she feels if he knows her feeling, his response wouldn't be like that. After the New Year's Day, she recalls about something else. Sang Ji asks Duan Jia Su through the WeChat whether that woman has looked for him again. Hearing his negative answer, she turns relieved. She doesn't feel twisted about it and focuses on her examination. On the 20th, the last day of examination week. Sang Ji books in advance the ticket at 21st afternoon to fly back home. She plans to take taxi, then goes to the nearest bus station to the airport. She is the earliest one to go home. In advance, four of them have agreed before they are going back home, they will find a night to go together and play. So after the last exam, they don't return to their dorm and just directly goes to the Japanese restaurant to eat. After the meal, Yu Exion suggests, there's a newly opened bar. Do you guys want to go over and play? Ningwei blinks her eyes. Could I bring my boyfriend? Yu Exion, okay, ah. Uh. Wang Ruolan, then I also want to ask out my Prince Charming together. Most of the guests of the newly opened bar are the college students. So from time to time they are there, they meet several people that they know. The boss of the bar is also the graduate student of Ehi University. Sang Ji and friends from her department has came over here before. They have no complaint or objection. Yu Xian, I, Ruolan, have you gotten him? Almost. When Ruolan starts to type words into her phone, she smiles and says, I feel that he also has the same feeling as me. He also asked me to go home together with Car. Sang Ji drinks her water. I, actually, I am interested with the Xiao Guga in the bar. Later on, you will see him. He is the one that plays guitar. Yu Exine says, I feel as long as you are not ugly, woman could get anything man she could. Sang Ji stops drinking. Yu Exine looks at her face on her phone and says narcissistically, if I go after him, then I could get him? I feel I'm quite beautiful. The other two start to pamper her. Sang Ji picks up her chopsticks and finishes the last sushi on the table. Ning Wei turns her head and notices Sang Ji's silence. Then he asks, I, Sang Sang, you are in a bad mood, right? Why aren't you talking? No. Sang Ji regains herself and smiles. I am listening to you guys. Probably because it's a newly opened bar, Sang Ji expects it to be crowded. But when she is there, only few people are there. Ningwei's boyfriend is called over too. Then her boyfriend also calls Jiang Ming. Jiang Ming naturally sits down beside Sang Shi. Sang Ji never talks to him face to face. They just usually communicate through WeChat. She looks at him and doesn't feel awkward, but she also doesn't take initiative to chat with him. Jiang Ming is a handsome, single eyelid man. He is skinny and tall. His smile is bright like sunshine man. The group starts to play dice. Sang Ji couldn't play that so she doesn't join the game. She just sits alone on the side and plays with her phone. She feels somewhat in bad mood. Her mood is not very good today so that night she just be silent and drinks her beer. This beer has a very good color. The scent is intense and sweet. Sang Ji feels that the taste is weird. It doesn't compatible with her taste. But she has ordered and doesn't want to waste it. She just forces herself to finish it. Jiang Ming doesn't play anymore and tries to talk with her. He points to the glass and reminds her, this beer has a high alcohol, could you drink it? Hi, Sang Ji touches her face. Then I'll not drink it. Jiang Ming takes another a glass, just drink this one. Sang Ji feels a bit dizzy. She shakes her head and says lowly, it's okay, I'll not drink again. You could drink. Jiang Ming doesn't force her. Do you want to drink water? No need, thank you. 
Sangji looks around and wants to ask Yu Xian whether they want to go home with her to the dorm. In a next moment, her phone on her hold vibrates. She looks at it. It's a call from Duan Jia Su. Sangji answers it. Good go. M, tomorrow at 8 a.m. You. He hasn't finished his words and hears noises from her side. He turns silent and asks, Where are you? I'm at the bar near the school. Sang Ji feels a bit uncomfortable. She says, I come here with my roommates, but now I want to go home. Duan Jia Su, you'll go home alone? Sang Ji, I'm asking whether they want to leave with me. Are you drinking? M. Sang Ji doesn't dare to be so honest. Just a bit. Duan Jia Su says calmly, What is the name of the bar? Sang Ji couldn't remember it and looks at Jiang Ming to ask, What is this bar called? Jiang Ming thinks about it. It seems to be Xing Chi Ba. Oh, thanks. Sang Ji looks back again and continues to talk with Duan Jia Su and hesitates. It seems to be Xing Chi Ba. Duan Jia Su is silent for a while. M, just sit down there and wait a while. I'll come over now. Sang Ji, ah. She couldn't comprehend why he is coming so sudden. She says, Why are you coming here? You also want to play. She could hear Duan Jia Su closing the door. He says deeply and sexily, Gogo is coming over to catch the drunkard. Sang Ji feels suffocated to be inside the bar. She wears her coat and says goodbye to everyone else. I'll go back first. I haven't tidied up things. Jiang Ming also stands up. I'll send you home. No need, my go is waiting for me outside. Jiang Ming is startled. Your house is right here? No. Sang Ji blinks and waves her hand. But my go is working here. She goes out of the bar. It's a cold outside. It's a little bit snowing outside. The cold wind blows and it makes she turns a bit sober. She inhales the air. Then she takes out her glove and wears it slowly. Sang Ji rarely sees snow. This time she feels interested with it. She takes a twig and kneels down. She draws stick people. She feels a bit powerless, her drawing is askew. Because she kneels for a long time, she feels like she wants to throw up. So she just sits down on the ground. Just in time Duan Jia Su has arrived. He parks the car on the roadside and gets off the car. He notices Sang Ji, who is sitting nearby. He asks, Sang Ji, why are you sitting down here? It's wet. Sang Ji turns her head and says, My trouser is wet. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows. What? Sang Ji wants to stand up, but she has no strength. Gugu, the snow is wet. Duan Jia Su inhales and holds her wrist to pull her up. How many have you drink? Sang Ji mumbles, just half a glass. Half glass of what beer? Also, who let you come over here? I am an adult, ah. Uh. Sang Ji lifts up her head and repeats seriously, I'm an adult. Even you are an adult, you shouldn't. Sang Ji cuts him off. Why shouldn't I? Duan Jia Su just turns startled and bends his body to see her. He asks, Xiao Sang Ji, why are you angry? She feels a bit wronged. She feels suddenly she wants to cry. You told me by yourself that after I am an adult, I could do anything I want. No one will control me. You said it by yourself. The thing she wants to do, the thing that she could do when she is an adult. There is still one thing. But after she is an adult, her courage seems to decrease. In the past, she didn't dare to tell him that she likes him. But now she has changed. She even doesn't dare to like him. It's clear that others that in the same age as him are very brave and bold to pursue after the partner they want and express their own liking. But why should she endure this? She wants to contact her rarely, but she also worried that he will be lonely. What is it? Duan Jia Su frowns. Who are bullying you? Sang Ji wipes her tears with her gloves and says depressingly, nothing. She is giddy and couldn't walk steadily. She wants to sit down again on the ground. But Duan Jia Su holds her. Sang Ji leans on his body. She mumbles to herself, I want to go home. Duan Jia Su feels it funny and annoyed. Tomorrow you will go home. I am uncomfortable. Sang Ji frowns. Gugu, I want to throw up. 
Duan Jia, Su takes off his coat and places it on her shoulder, then just throw up. Sang Ji tries for a while. I couldn't do it. Duan Jia, Su says lightly, then let's go and sit down nearby. I couldn't walk. Sang Ji shakes her head. I'll not go. Gugu will carry you. Sang Ji looks at him. After a while, she starts to cry and suddenly get angry. I'll not go, I'll not go. Duan Jia, Su says. Then let's go to the car. I don't want. Duan Jia, Su wants to laugh. Then Xiao Sang Ji wants to stay here to catch a chill? Sang Ji doesn't respond to his words, or perhaps she doesn't listen to him. Guga, could I tell you a secret? M? I have someone that I really like. Sang Ji looks down and sobs, but he doesn't like me. Duan Jia Su couldn't maintain his smile. Who is it? Sang Ji doesn't answer it. Is he your internet boyfriend? Duan Jia Su asks hoarsely, or someone from your university? Sang Ji looks at him and turns silence for a while. I'll not tell you. The fact she likes Duan Jia Su. Sang Ji never tells with anyone. No one. Since the time she likes him, gives up and couldn't help but to keep on liking him. She keeps it all by herself. Only she knows about it all. Duan Jia Su asks, you also couldn't tell Guga? Sang Ji wants to say something, but then she feels something surge up from her stomach. She suddenly leaned forward and resting her upper body on his chest. She couldn't control herself and just throws up on his body. After a while, Sangji stands up and seems to be a bit sober. She notices what she did and takes a step back. She says timidly, I'm not doing this in purpose. Because he is afraid that she will fall down, he holds her arm. Sangji struggles and takes few steps back again. She kneels down. Don't scold me. Duan Jia Su looks at his cloth and just takes it off. He then wears his coat again. He also kneels down in front of her and wipes her mouth with the dirty cloth. He says, how could I scold you? Sang Ji sobs. Don't be angry with me. Duan Jia Su, stand up. I don't want. Sang Ji just sits down and acts like she will not move. You definitely will be angry with me. I'll not be angry at you. Duan Jia Su says patiently. Get up, don't get cold. Sang Ji is somewhat alerted so she doesn't move. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows and asks, also when I have ever scolded you? Sang Ji is silent. Where is this little drunkard coming from? Duan Jia Su isn't angry. He smiles. Stand up. Gu Ji's cloth is dirty. I couldn't carry you. Sang Ji lowers her head and says, then you couldn't mind me. Um, indeed, I don't really want to mind. Duan Jia Su kneels down in front of her with his back facing her, but I'm a bit hate to do it with you. Get on. Duan Jia Su says, Gugu will carry you on my back. Chapter 39 She looks at his back. Sang Ji hesitates for few seconds. At first, she wanted to just lie on it. But she remembers something. She says, seriously, you couldn't carry me on your back. Duan Jia Su looks at her when he hears this. You also don't let me to do this? Sang Ji nods and says, Yi Shang, doctor, said you need to avoid to carry heavy things for three months. Duan Jia Su is startled a bit and smiles. You are drunk, but you still remember this? Sang Ji doesn't respond. She just lowers her eyes and counts with her fingers. Your operation was in 11, November, 12, 13, 14. No, it's wrong. It's wrong. Sang Ji frowns. 12, 13. Duan Jia Su laughs. 12, December, 1, January. Sang Ji looks at him, her mind is in chaos. She doesn't understand why 12 then 1. She hesitates, then. Guh guh, just help me to count it. March. Sang Ji, oh. She sits up and asks, March, could you carry me on your back? Duan Jia Su laughs, I could. Then Sang Ji suddenly remembers, but I am 40 kg. She says it, she starts to cry and crumbles. I am 40 kg. I also, she looks down and be dumbfounded. She cries sadly. I have no chest. I have no chest, Wu. I have no chest. Duan Jia Su just kneels down on the ground. He never expects to hear those words. He is startled few seconds. 
He feels like he is teased by her. He laughs out loud. His laugh till he couldn't breath, his voice turns hoarse. What are you talking about? Why are you laughing at me? Sangji is still teary. She points at him and says unhappily, You also don't have it. Why are you laughing at me? Em, I also don't have. Duan Jia Su immediately restrains himself. So let's comfort each other for a while, okay? Sang Ji immediately stops crying and feels like she finds someone in the same experience as her. She finally is perfectly happy to lie on his back. Then, don't don't be too sad. Duan Jia Su stands up and controls his laughter. And let's not be too sad. Sang Ji uses her glove to wipe her tears. Guh guh, what if I throw up later on? Duan Jia Su throws his dirty cloth to the bin and looks around. He says gently, if you want to throw up, later on tell me. She says, what if I couldn't endure it? Then just don't hold it. Duan Jia Su says, just don't throw up on Gu Ji's head. Sang Ji, oh, she says nothing else. Duan Jia Su is afraid that she will feel uncomfortable to get on the car. He just carries her up back to Ihi University. He asks casually, Tomorrow you need to take the plane. Why were you drinking alcohol? Sangji places her chin on his shoulder. She says, I am unhappy. She says it and suddenly cries. She says depressingly, Ji Ji is unhappy. Duan Jia Su looks at her. Ji Ji, why are you unhappy? Sangji doesn't answer. Duan Jia Su looks at front. In the dark, his expression is dim. Because that's someone that Ziji likes? Sangji wipes her tears and M. Um, you couldn't tell me who is it? M. Um, then you can describe to Gugu a bit. Duan Jia Su says calmly. How does he look like? Is he good? Is he treating you good? Sangji lifts up her head and looks at his side face. She bends her head and says, Nan, Nan, Man, Man. After quite a while, she hasn't finished it. What Nan, Man? Duan Jia Su says, Nanshin, male god, Mr. Perfect. Sangji shakes her head and says, Nan, Nan Huli Jing, man fox spirit, a seductive woman. Duan Jia Su. What kind of description it is? He is a good person, he treats me well. Sangji's mood just falls down, she chokes. But he always treats anyone well. She says it and she suddenly turns angry. Zhang, Yang. Kong, Tiao, Zhong Yang Kong Tiao. Central air conditioning is a buzzword on the internet, referring to men who radiate warmth and love to two or more women at the same time, as if the central air conditioning that blows cold air to anyone. He is bad boy. This time Duan Jia Su doesn't smile. He just turns silent and says, you like him that much? Sang Ji feels so heartbroken. She buries her face on his shoulder. Her tears keep on falling down. She is sobbing loudly. She couldn't control herself. She is crying like a little kid. Duan Jia Su continues to ask, then let's not like him anymore, okay? Sang Ji says nothing and just cries. Duan Jia Su doesn't say anything else. He enters the Ihi University gate and takes her to her dorm. Her sobbing sound gradually disappears. She seems to fall asleep. The road to the dorm is a bit quiet, so it's like another world. Duan Jia Su turns his head to look at her. He notices that Sang Ji has fallen asleep. She seems to tire herself out because of the crying so long. Duan Jia Su calls after her, Sang Ji. There's no reply. Her breathing has a normal rhythm. Her breath feels warm and light on his neck. Duan Jia Su looks at her for a long time and suddenly laughs. You like that kind of man? Nanhuli Jing, seductive man? Then, Duan Jia Su mumbles, I change to be that kind of man, okay? The young girl doesn't move. She has entered her dream. She doesn't hear anything. Then I'll only be good toward you, okay? Duan Jia Su continues, Then our GG will not be sad anymore. Letting anyone else take care of you, I still really feel anxious. Could I? You don't say anything, so Gugu will just think that you agree with me. Duan Jia Su waits for a while and he smiles. Okay, our Gigi agrees. Gugu is quite good, right? Duan Jia Su says carelessly and casually. 
I'm not poor. I'm also handsome. Except I'm a bit older than you. But when I was 20 years old, you said that I'm old. To round it off, now you are 20 years old too. He feels it reasonable. He teases. So our Xiao Sang Ji is old too. This a woman that he watches growing up for few years. If she could meet someone that she really likes and treats her well forever. Of course, it's a good thing. But he's afraid that she might be hurt. Just like tonight, even she is drunk. She couldn't say what she really feels. She even cries even when she is sleeping. Duan Jia Su thinks about it. Except her family members, there shouldn't no one could treat her well than him. Go Go will earn more money and let you be able to eat a candy that costs around 1,000 yuan. Duan Jia Su says, then you'll forgive good Ji's. Good Ji's plan to allow Nyo Chi Nun Chao. Old cow eats tender grass. Old man has relationship to younger woman. He smiles, okay? Sang Ji is muddle headed. She hears Duan Jia Su wakes her up to ask what is her dorm room number. Then she is carried by him upstairs. He prepares a glass of warm water and honey, then he asks her to finish it. He seems to ask the woman in the next dorm room to help change her clothes. Then he lets her sleep. The time she wakes up, it's already the next morning. She has a great headache. She sits up dully. She is a bit blank. She recalls what happened last night. She said a lot of things. She also said to him that she has someone that she likes. But she remembers that even she was drunk, her lips are sealed. She doesn't say anything he shouldn't. But she vomited on him. Sangji pulls her hair. She covers her face inside the blanket. She looks at her phone and notices Duan Jia Su sends her several messages. She straightens her lips and opens the messages up. Her other roommates have woken up. They look over at her. When Ruolan sits down and looks at her, she asks, Sang Ji, the one that sent you back here, is it your good Ji's friend that you said before? Sang Ji says, M. You exine turns excited. Wow, he is really handsome. I didn't believe you before, but D asterisk MM asterisk T, he is really handsome. I really, compared to my boyfriend, he is great. Ningwei says, Yesterday, when we came home, we thought we are in the wrong dorm. Sang Ji couldn't help to ask, when did he go? When we were back home 12 p.m., he just left. Ningwei says, he seemed to keep on sitting down on your current seat. Wang Ruolan, he should be afraid that you are uncomfortable, so he stayed to take care of you. Sang Ji nods and looks at her phone. Guga number two, I asked your roommates to wake you up at 9 a.m., Guga number two, this time the ticket is sold out. You couldn't reschedule it. You should get up now. If not, you will not be able to go home. Guga number two, after you are awake, drink a bit of water. I'll come over to take you to the airport at 10 a.m. Sang Ji just replies, okay. Then she looks at the time. It's just 9 a.m. She lifts up her blanket and tidies up her bed. She says, if this lifetime I drink alcohol again, I am a dog. You Xian is curious. What are you doing, ah? Sang Ji doesn't say anything. Wang Ruolan smiles. Did you kiss him when you were drunk? How could it be? Sang Ji looks at her. Stop saying nonsense. You were drunk, then you confessed? Sang Ji takes off her coat and looks at her. Now I'll be crazy. Ning Wei, then what did you do? Sang Ji pauses and feels twisted. She says, I threw up on his body. The dorm room turns silence. You exine coughs. No wonder I feel a weird scent. When Ruolan sympathizes with her, then your silent crush should end now. Ningwei, how could you not control it? I also don't want it. Sang Ji suddenly thinks about it. She smells the scent on his body. She frowns. I forget it. Later I'll apologize to her. Ningwei, but he doesn't look like he dislike you that much. He has a great temper. If I throw up on his body, supposedly, he will not be angry. Sangji gets off the bed and tidying up everything. I need to have a shower now. She takes her change clothes and goes into the bathroom. Before she gets into the bathroom, Sangji could hear her roommate says, Xin Xian Nan Ren, Immortal Man. 
After the shower, Sangji takes her hairdryer to dry her hair. Because she drunk alcohol, her state of mind isn't that great. Sangji applies makeup quickly on her face, then opens up her suitcase to tidy up her things. She doesn't bring anything much home, she just brings several books and her laptop and bedding bag and sheets. She doesn't bring home anything else. After a while, at 10 a.m. Sang, Ji says goodbye to her roommates and drags her suitcase out of her dorm. Because it's holiday, the car could enter the university complex. Sang Ji immediately notices Duan Jia Su's car and walks over. She considers how should she apologize to him. Very quickly, Duan Jia Su gets off the car and comes over to drag her suitcase for her. Sang Ji doesn't dare to look at him and says, G -g Good morning. Duan Jia Su, M, good morning. She doesn't say anything else. She plans to apologize to him when they are on the car. She gets on the front passenger seat and Duan Jia Su puts her suitcase on the trunk. He is a step later than her to get on the car. Hearing the door is closed, Sang Ji looks at him and says, Yesterday I drunk too much, I was uncomfortable. Duan Jia Su looks at her, M. So I couldn't endure it. Sang Ji feels embarrassed to mention it. She lowers her head. I accidentally did it. It should be disgusting. I'm sorry, Gugu. He says carelessly, it's okay. After he says it, Sang Ji feels that he approaches her. Her breathing pauses. She lifts her head and looks at him. Their gazes meet each other. Duan Jia Su lowers her his head and looks at her intensely. He suddenly smiles. His body is closed with each other. Then he takes the seatbelt on her side. What is it? Sang Ji feels unease. Oh, I forget to fasten. Duan Jia Su helps her to buckle up. He keeps on looking at her like he is tempting her. Sang Ji asks again, What are you doing? Duan Jia Su sits back slowly and buckles his seatbelt again. Nothing. Sang Ji says, Oh. The car starts moving. Sang Ji looks at her and feels something is strange, but she couldn't say it. She scratches her head and doesn't care much about it. She looks at the check-in time for her ticket. 2.30 p.m. flight, should we go to the airport now? Let's have a meal first. Duan Jia Su says, we will go to the airport after that. She remembers that this time she will go home for a month. Sang Ji hesitates and asks, Gu -gu, for the Lunar New Year, how would you plan to spend it? Stay home and see the Spring Festival Gala evening? Duan Jia Su considers it, then wait for Xiao Sang Ji's blessing message. Why it sounds so miserable? Right. Sang Ji pursues her lips. She tries to form her wording. This year you also, right? 26 years old. You should have a girlfriend. If you have time, you also can. Which girlfriend? Just in time, it's a red light. Duan Jia Su stops his car. He says lazily, Xiao Sang Ji will introduce someone for Guga. Sang Ji, who should I introduce you to? The ones that I know are around my age. Duan Jia Su smiles gently. Around your age? Supposedly, Sang Ji thinks that he will say, Forget it, you Xiao Peng you. Sang Ji could guess it, so she just nods. After a while, Duan Jia Su smiles. When the car starts to move again, Sang Ji hears he says lightly, Okay. Chapter 40 Sang Ji stops moving. She lifts her head to look at him. Her mind goes blank. She feels she might have an illusion because of being drunk last night. The car is peaceful. There's only a smooth music. After a while, Sang Ji just regains herself and responds, Ah. Duan Jia Su looks in front. Sang Ji could only his side face. He smiles and says casually, What is it? Sang Ji asks lowly, What did you want to say? Duan Jia Su doesn't understand. M? Sang Ji, ah. Ah, uh, what? Duan Jia Su's expression doesn't change. He looks refined and calm and laughs. Did I say anything? Sang Ji says hesitatingly, Nothing. Duan Jia Su is still smiling and says nothing. Sang Ji notices that his eyes are look strange. She withdraws her gaze and just be puzzled. She lowers her head and takes out a thermos mug out of her bag. She suddenly pours it out. Duan Jia Su notices her movement and gazes at her. What are you doing? Sang Ji frowns and continues to pour the water to sober up. 
Duan Jiasu's eyebrows raise up and says gently, Um, drink more. Yesterday, indeed, that drink is too alcoholic. Now she feels a bit sick. Her head feels heavy. She has no appetite to eat. She just wants to eat a bit of fruits or perhaps drinks a bowl of warm soup. Duan Jia Su considers this and looks for a nearby Guangdong style restaurant. The time the car passes a fruit store, Duan Jia Su gets in and buys two boxes of strawberries. When Sangji is ordering, he stands up and goes to the restroom to wash clean two boxes of strawberries. Sangji looks over it for quiet a long time. At last, she chews a bowl of preserved egg and lean meat porridge. Looking that Duan Jia Su is back, Sangji passes the menu to his front. I'm done. Guh guh. Take a look what do you want to eat. Duan Jia Su puts the strawberries on the side and takes tissue to wipe his hand. Then he takes the menu. He glances at her and says, Is it enough for you to just order a bowl of porridge? I don't want to eat this. Sangji points. I want to eat strawberries. Eat a bit of it first, then you could eat this. Duan Jia Su takes the pen and orders several food that suits Sangji's taste. Drink the tea first. Later on, I have things to ask you. His tone sounds like he wants to square accounts after the autumn harvest. Sangji pauses and thinks about what happened last night when she was drunk. She explains, Last night, we went to the bar near the university. Most of the guests there are students. The students of our university frequently comes there. Duan Jia Su passes the menu to the waiter and lifts up his eyes. Then for the drink, I just ordered it randomly. Sangji says honestly, I also never drink that. I didn't know that's too alcoholic. I feel that I am quite good at drinking. I also didn't want to waste it. Who did you go with? My roommates. Really? Duan Jia Su props his face on one of his hand. He looks at her. Then how could I hear a man's voice? Sangji recalls what happened. He is my roommate's friend. Then why do I feel that his voice is familiar? Duan Jia Su asks lazily, Sang Ji, are you free? Sang Ji is startled, what? Duan Jia Su, is it that man? Sang Ji hasn't responded, what that man? She hasn't finished her words and suddenly her mind replays what did happen the first day Duan Jia Su was hospitalized. He listened to Jiang Ming's voice note. That time Jiang Ming seemed to say those words. This old man, why didn't he go to be a police? He could remember it. Sang Zi feels a bit oppressed. Why? I just know several friends. He is not a bad guy. I also didn't do anything wrong. That man's nickname is Nan Huli Jing, Foxy Man, Seductive Man. Duan Jia Su doesn't listen to it. He just takes a teapot and pours it to her glass. Is he Zhong Yang Kong Tiao? Sang Ji immediately feels diffident. His anger just disappears. She doesn't dare to look at him. She pretends to drink her water and says, No. Duan Jia Su smiles. Then tell Gugu about it. He starts to do a formulaic language. This person loves to gossip. Sang Ji just says firmly, No, I don't want. It's a silence. Sang Ji looks at him and notices that he isn't looking at her. He just looks at what's on the table like he is thinking about something. The time Sangji thinks that he has given up, she prepares to change the topic of the conversation. Duan Jia Su suddenly repeats. He seems lost in thought. Nan, Hu, Li, Jing. Duan Jia Su turns his head and asks, is he look like a young girl? Sangji at first didn't want to mind him, but hearing this, she couldn't help but to look at him. She looks at him for two seconds and refutes. No, it's like... Talking about this, she suddenly stops. She tries hard to think of an exact description. Then she says, A very man Nan Huli Jing. Duan Jia Su is almost choked. He says absurdly, What? The person she describing it is in front of her, but this man doesn't know about the fact. After all, it seems that he feels that her description is too unthinkable. It's basically non-existent. Sang Ji feels that this matter is too subtle. She mumbles, anyway, my description isn't wrong. Anyway, it's like that. Just in time, Sangji's order has served out. She doesn't want to continue talking about this. She is afraid the more he asks, she will really be exposed. Sangji uses her spoon and scoops half bowl of the porridge. She asks, Guga, do you want to eat porridge? Duan Jia Su moves her big bowl of porridge closer to her. You could drink it. 
Sangji nods and pretends to be eating seriously. She doesn't say anything else. Duan Jia Su seems not finished in talking about that topic. Very quickly, Sangji hears Duan Jia Su asks, Xiao Sangji likes a muscly man? Sangji doesn't want to answer him. She is unhappy. Could you not be that gossipy? Is this being gossipy? Duan Jia Su laughs and smiles. Good, good, just never see someone like what you said. Please satisfy my curious thought. Sangji forces herself to not say, Please take a look at yourself in the mirror, okay? She restrains herself and finds fault with him. You are just being gossipy. You are the most gossipy man I ever see. Duan Jia Su raises his eyebrows most. Sangji doesn't even blink, right? Duan Jia Su, is it that serious? Um. Okay. Duan Jia Su knocks on the table with his finger, hearing your words. Gugu feels a bit heartbroken. Sangji looks over at her and moves her lips. She wants to say something. The next moment, Duan Jia Su lifts up his eyes. But indeed, Gugu very gossipy. So Xiao Sangji tells Gugu about it? She knows that this person is shameless. Sangji doesn't mind him anymore. For his questions, she doesn't answer all of it. She chooses questions that she wants to hear. After the meal, they sit down there for a while, and when it's almost time, they start to move to depart to the airport. Sangji sits on the front passenger seat. She takes out her box of strawberries and eats it. Because of the hot food she ate before, her whole body turns comfortable. Her head isn't that heavy anymore. Duan Jia Su, it takes around an hour to the airport. Do you want to sleep? I don't want to sleep. Sangji shakes her head. I'll sleep on the plane. She lowers her head and takes off the remaining leaves on the strawberries. Just in time, the traffic light turns red. Sangji asks casually, Guh -guh, do you want to eat strawberries? Duan Jia Su looks at her and then strawberry for two seconds. He smiles and says, um. Then his head approaches her closer. He doesn't move his hand, he just opens his mouth. It's a clear signal. Sangji is stupefied. You want me to feed you? Duan Jia Su, um. Why are you asking me to feed you? Sangji asks. She immediately passes the box to her. I already take off all of the leaves. You eat by yourself. I am holding the steering wheel. Duan Jia Su says. My hands are not clean. After several seconds. Sangji takes a breath and thinks that in the past she used to feed Sang Yin candies too. She doesn't think it's inappropriate, so she doesn't respond too intense. She just takes a strawberry and passes to his mouth. Duan Jia Su bites it. Her fingers accidentally touches his lips. It feels like her fingers accidentally touches something hot. Sangji responds by withdrawing her hand quickly. She naturally uses her clothes to rub her fingers. Duan Jia Su also notices this. He bits the strawberry. The sweet and sour taste of the strawberry covers her tongue. He licks his lips. His lips turns a bit red because of the juice. His face turns even evil and suddenly calls after. Xiao Sangji. Sang Ji forces herself to say, What are you doing? Pay attention a bit. Duan Jia Su's smile rascally, and he seems to look in a good mood. Don't take advantage of Gu Gu. Sang Ji almost loses her taste. Could he not be that shameless? After sending her inside the, to the security check, Duan Jia Su exits the airport and returns to his car. He looks at his phone and notices a missed call on his phone. It's a call from Qian Fei. He calls him back. Qian Fei answers it in several seconds. Lao Su. Duan Jia Su. M. Qian Fei says deeply. I will not asking you to be my best man for my wedding. Why? Duan Jia Su finds this is funny. You have any objection toward me? Toward both you and Sang Yan, of course I have. Qian Fei says. If you both stand beside me, you guys would like you are coming and wanting to rob my wife. What are you talking? Duan Jia Su says, just because of that? Wait, there's more, there's more. Qian Fei laughs and says, let's talk about the little girl that you said to me. It's the first time you are interested in a woman. Duan Jia Su, bye. Wait, Qian Fei says, I, it's been a long time since we met. Now you don't think of me as your brother again. If not, how could you not tell me about this? Just for this matter, you keep on calling me for several times. Duan Jia Su is happy. But you keep on being silent to me? 
I'm just curious. Jian Fei says, don't tell me that you have a guilty because that girl is too young, so you don't want to chase after her. Duan Jia Su strokes his forehead. Why are you talking so much? Qian Fei, how do you know her? At your office, Lash. No. I also never hear from you that you go anywhere else. Qian Fei says, be honest. Have you start to chase after her? You will not lose your courage to pursue her just because her young age. Duan Jia Su is silent and suddenly smiles. I'll take it slow. That girl is regarding him as her own biological go. If it's too much, it seems to not working. Thinking about what he did today, he clears his throat. I haven't done that kind of thing, but I don't know why it feels a bit. Handy. Hearing the answer he wants, Qian Fei feels a bit startled. You just mentioned about this two days ago? You said that she is young, and you asked me to not mention this. What happened to you? You lose your guilty feeling? I am old. Duan Jia Su laughs lightly. What should I do if I have it? Sang Ji, brute. It's a silence for several seconds. Duan Jia Su looks at the front passenger seat. He suddenly remembers that the first morning he woke up when he was hospitalized. That young girl is curled up and slept on the carriage chair. He remembers the day she was drunk, and yet she still remembered that the matter's needing attention after his operation. He recalls the image of her sitting down on the front passenger seat of his car. She was eating strawberries and stuffing her cheeks until she looked like a pufferfish. He recalls her smile, her dimple that shows up when she is smiling. He even thinks her appearance when she was crying for someone else. Duan Jia Su lowers his head and smiles. He says, it's a good feeling. Qian Fei, what? I also almost 30 years old. I haven't done anything that I want to do, so I want to try it out. Duan Jia Su says lowly, but if I scare her, just forget it. But I feel Duan Jia Su rubs his lips. He remembers Sang Ji's response and laughs dispiritedly. My action is quite okay, right? <laughs>